All right, guys, before we start today, I just want to dedicate this episode to Sam Croft for supporting us on Patreon. Um, Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Uh, We really appreciate it, and we'll definitely put it to good use. From Robo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGaulier and Caleb Schweiss. This is... Is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy. The Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast. I am Joe. And I am Caleb. And today. You know what we're going to be talking about today and probably next week if we split this episode like we have in the last two? Um, Final Fantasy, n- wait, nine? Yes, nine, Final right. Fantasy, nine. you finished it, right? Oh, yeah, I finished okay, it. Okay, I, I did too. You were in the room. I was in the room. <laughs> I was just messing with you, so man. So technically, I have to question you. Maybe you just went home and were like, hmm, hmm, I could beat it or I could just watch it. Yeah, we actually, well, I gave myself... Okay, how do I how do I say this? We usually give ourselves a month to finish these games, at least one through nine we have. And then it usually turned into something else. It was like yeah. a, a month and a week, or a month and two months, I don't know. Yeah, a month and four <laughs> weeks. Uh, and, you know, certain life issues would get in the way of that, but since I'm not in school this semester, boy, and you're right. I don't have a sick, <laughs> sick job anymore. And, yeah, yeah, and he doesn't have a sick job anymore. I, yeah, it is more appropriate to get something, a, a, a smaller Final Fantasy, like Final Fantasy IX, not a 45-hour game, uh, by the way, forum users. <laughs> Yeah, it's sorry a guys. Fucking lie. <laughs> There's no way. There's uh, only you can get everything done in 45 hours in that game. I'm Probably. Sure. Yeah. It's a, it's kind of a smaller Final Fantasy as far as what you can do. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we finished it around 32, 33 hours, both yeah. of us. I think mine was 32 something. My final save. Yeah, so was mine. 32 something. Nice. Yeah. So uh, the 45 hour thing is just bullshit. Anyway, we gave ourselves a month to finish it, and we actually did it. I had to, because I'm kind of organized in, in a certain fashion. I had to kind of, you know, say that I would get done with a disc uh, every week. Mm-hmm. And, um, we can't do that anymore, though. We can't do that anymore. <laughs> Unless we play 13 on, you know, an Xbox 360 that doesn't have any storage true, space guess, on the yeah. discs. <laughs> One month per disc. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I mean, I think it's two discs, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't three. have a. I don't have a 360. It's two or three discs. I'm not sure. And it's more compressed, so the image isn't as good. I know. You dirty, Xbox users, dirty bastards. <laughs> anyway, um, Final Fantasy X is more of a 50-hour game. At least in my experience, it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Caleb has a six save where yeah, it's in at like what 26 hours or something like that. Uh, it's 31. Oh, 31. Still sick. It's pretty fast. Um. It's because the main Final Fantasy games are going to get so much bigger from this game on. We're looking at more like two months. Yeah, I mean, Final Fantasy. I'll probably get them done faster. And I'm going to try really hard to to get to those places in in certain times. So if if you go to our forums, I put down uh, in case you're playing along with us on Final Fantasy X thing, uh, which is my plan for beating certain, like getting to certain parts of the games each week. Yeah. So you can follow that if you want, and uh, I'm going to try to follow it really hard. I, I had a little trouble with this three this this time, like my disc three time. Uh, went over into my fourth week. <laughs> it was a really long disc. So uh, yeah, fine. it was a really long disc, and I was, I don't know, I was having money problems, so I had to take up a couple extra days of work mm-hmm. um, that I wasn't scheduled, and so I could make a little bit more money. <laughs> I took over some other people's shifts. Awesome. Yep. So, uh, so that happened. Anyway, so if you're playing along with uh, Final Fantasy X, we should be done by what was it, April? February, March, April, yeah, April eleventh. Yeah, it's something like that. It's, it's something like that. Exactly two months, and like no, a it's bit. it's nine weeks. Nine weeks is what yeah. we got because the exactly two months from now is like the middle of the week. So we just nine weeks forward. from February seventh. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
And uh, so if you want to play along with us, that's what you need to do. Yeah, and we're both going to be playing the uh, 10, 10 2 remake on PS3. So. Yeah. Well, not 10 2, but no, 10. Not, no, well, we will play 10 2 on there too, I'm sure. At some point. <laughs> but uh, I will. The only reason I'm going to, one, is for the trophies, and two, I am curious to see how it looks in high def. So I've never really looked. It also has the dark Aeons. That's true. It's the international version, which I am always jealous of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they change things over to like bring over here. There's like know. no reason. They just don't want no non racist reason to change things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not our fault, man. You guys wouldn't back down. It's like they lowered the difficulty level for Final Fantasy IV uh, because they thought we couldn't handle it. Really? Yeah. It's bullshit. <laughs> it was from that, that was in the Super NES era, so that was Final Fantasy II. Mm. Yeah. Of course, the real thing is kind of bullshit when you get to the moon. Yeah. It is pretty hard. It's sick. <laughs> it's really sick. Yeah, at least, the, like, the gap. I guess if you've been, like, leveling up like crazy, yeah. maybe not. Okay, so... Oh, also, I gotta tell you guys, uh, we're not gonna treat this like a regular episode. We do have new iTunes reviews. We're gonna save those for our next uh, non-review episode. Um, could be next week, could be the week after, uh, depending on how long this one is. I mean, we've been splitting the last few episodes. That's been good for us, and uh, it's been good for you guys, too, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. And so we're going to keep doing that. Um, so we didn't in case this you. episode, In case this episode hits the three-hour mark. If it's below the three-hour mark, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, also, final... So, yeah, we're going to skip reviews. We're going to skip... Uh, what else do we usually skip? Oh, we're going to skip news. And uh, there's not that much news anyway. I guess Final Fantasy 15 has got awesome graphics. Yep. <laughs> That's about it. Obviously. It's about the only news there is. And, uh, hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, Final Fantasy 11. Uh, after we beat Final Fantasy 10, uh, we are open to users of our forums and listeners to our show and our YouTube watchers uh, to come join us to play Final Fantasy XI, the Bastok Missions. Yep. Uh, and we're going to be on every night at a specified time, most likely 9 p.m., but we'll have more information when we get closer to that. But I am going to remind you guys of this every single episode up until then so that yeah. we have some people playing with us. And who knows? I mean, if you guys help us move through the story faster, we could maybe get to 12 faster. It all depends. Yeah, I guess it does all The depend. more help we have, I mean... <laughs> All right. Well, Caleb, let's get to our review. All right. glimpse into the early process of the game was revealed on the early net by early <laughs> was on the early net on the internet by Sakaguchi in 2010 on Mistwalker's blog which is Sakaguchi's company uh, Sakaguchi posted early notes for the opening of Final Fantasy 9 and although the blog post is now impossible to find I know this I had to look for the freaking thing uh, an amateur translation was jotted down in a forum deep deep inside the internet uh, and I I want you guys to kind of listen to this. this is probably the biggest glimpse we'll ever get into the process the making of any of these games and we do have two entries there's one for uh for movie number one that sakaguchi was planning which you guys can read in our show notes it's just too long for us to read right now and then we got one for uh sakaguchi notes for movie number four that's what it says here and uh you can kind of you kind of get into the mind of sakaguchi a little bit here yeah. I, I i want you guys to hear this caleb could you uh could you explain these notes yep yeah, so close up of princess garnett close up of her breasts <laughs> view of her breasts inside the clothes a little also a view of her pendant of royalty oh yeah also that yeah that's because that's <laughs> what we were looking at here come on <laughs> yeah 
five people. <laughs> hallway. She rushes away from the hallway to stare at each other. So obviously one is Zidane, the other one's Thief. Zidane. Hey, what's that? Thief. Her breasts look comfortable. Zidane. No, no. She was wearing the pendant of the summons, permitted by only royalty. Thief. I fell in love at first sight. <laughs> Zidane. Deep blue stone. The legend of Leviathan. Was it Princess Garnett? Thief. What are you talking about? Zidane. Never mind. Change of plan. Let's follow after her. <laughs> Final Fantasy IX would be the last Final Fantasy on the PlayStation. And as the series planned to move on to the next generation, it was nine that was left to fittingly end the single-digit series of Final Fantasy games. So I want you to guys... Did you guys hear those notes? I mean, you were going to go on to the next paragraph that I got written here, and that's fine. Um, but <laughs> obviously some stuff has changed since Sakaguchi did these notes and uh, what we finally got in the uh, in Final Fantasy IX. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting that he got rid of the underage girl. <laughs> uh, the, the How should I say this? The sexualization of the under, underage girl. Because uh, Princess Garnetta, I believe, is 16, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so we that. can blame Sakaguchi on the creepy factor here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sakaguchi. All right. So on, on what you were saying there about Final Fantasy IX being the, the end of the single-digit Final Fantasy games, here's a little excerpt from uh, Fumatsu Inernu uh, with the Gooch, of course. Uh, Famitsu, I should say. Sakaguchi. I was thinking of it as an end. FF10 and FF11 are going to be on PS2 as well as play online. So with those, we were wanting to concentrate less on the feel of a world, but more to use visuals, which would push the hardware's ability. In that sense, because FF9 is the third in the series on PlayStation, instead of making it by pushing the abilities of the present hardware, we thought of making the feel of a Final Fantasy world once more. Hmm. Interviewer. In the previous interview, it was explained that Final Fantasy was going back to its roots. And when you look at the logo, the crystal is there. Is there really, uh, like, is it really going to go back to the roots of the FF series? And, and why, why is that? Well, I wanted to try it out. <laughs> uh, I said it. <laughs> I said that it was because... I didn't write that, Caleb. It just says laughs. Laughs, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I said that it was because it was the last single numbered FF, but yes, I like the number nine. So he just likes the number nine. Yeah, He I thinks wonder. of it as lucky. I think uh, he in that interview, he references some kind of uh, gambling, Japanese gambling game, and mm. the number nine is like a lucky number. Uh, anyway... So, Sakaguchi actually served as producer of the game with uh, Shinji Hashimoto, so he was a co-producer, and was the scenario writer for the send-off. Uh, it was not originally planned to be a mainline Final Fantasy game, and had been given the title of Final Fantasy Gaiden during conceptual stages of the game. Uh, it wasn't officially announced as Final Fantasy IX until late in 1999, when Final Fantasy IX, X, and XI were announced simultaneously. Wow. Yeah, so... You know, you're hearing Sakaguchi calling it a send-off, and maybe they were planning on making a spin-off game that was a send-off to the series and then decided to make it, like, a legitimate Final Fantasy. Um, but we don't actually know the decision-making process in that. Yeah. So as a return to the Final Fantasy, or to the fantasy genre that began the series, Final Fantasy IX may not seem like the natural sequel to FF6, 7, or 8. And why would it be? I mean, <laughs> none of them are really sequels. And they all do kind of build upon each other, so I guess, yeah. Yeah, usually they do. The most notable difference is, of course, the controversial design and look of the game. Anime, realism, and steampunk gave way to old castles and more of a Western fantasy approach. Hiroyuki Ito stated that they pulled from Norse and Northern European mythology, and to cap off the retro feel, there were some nice deformed character models to match the pre-FF8 Final Fantasy games. Yep. So this is uh, from the art director, Hideo Minaba. Uh, as this is the last single-digit Final Fantasy, we wanted to give the feeling of a series watershed, a sort of grand collection of what has come before. Uh, the old fantasy feel... This is not him talking anymore, this is me. <laughs> this old fantasy feel not only affected the look of the game but also the soundtrack as scored by Nubu Uematsu, uh, who, of course, scored the previous eight games. Right. Right. Uh, 
He says, uh, he says here, I was shooting for subtle, classical sounding tunes that fit the general setting and feel of this game. Uh, he states, although he did start to clear start to steer clear of that feel. Um, this departure and boredom with the sound he was originally going for may have to do with the 160 tracks he recorded for the game. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, the game ended up using around 140, including some remixes of other FF soundtracks. Did notice that. Yeah. And Uematsu uh, talked about some of the other soundtracks here. Right. He also says he wanted to remix some of the older songs. Um, some of the character and location names were the same, so he thought it would be cool to use something from the past series. Series. Yep. Uh, so some staff for Final Fantasy IX were returning from other Final Fantasy games. However, as Yoshinori Kitase, the director of Seven and Eight, uh, was moving on to Final Fantasy X, the directing duties as well as battle design duties uh, were put onto the shoulders of Hiroyuki Ito, who of course created the battle system mm-hmm. for all the previous games, I believe. Right. Uh, maybe not all of them, but he created Active Time and he created. Uh, the junction system and I believe the material system is that correct? Yeah, he he designed the battle okay. systems. For I'm all. trying to remember what we all that research we did on on that last where all the research you did on the, on here you he developed all of them though. Okay, that's cool. All right. So Ito took much of the staff from Final Fantasy Tactics to work on the game, uh, and as the game was mostly created in Hawaii, possibly due to Sakaguchi's involvement on both Final Fantasy IX and Spirits Within, uh, many of the staff members were not Japanese. Yet another reason the game, well, yet another probable or possible reason the game has more of a Western sensibility to it. Yeah. Because they had Westerners working on the game. True. Um, now, this is kind of something... I heard from an episode of a podcast called My Favorite Game, and they had this guest named Alex Donaldson, who's some kind of critic or something like that, and he's like a super fan of Final Fantasy IX. And he was talking about how this is about the point in the series in which there became like two main Final Fantasy teams, like the creators of the games, and that they usually kind of switch off. So he was talking about how you could see kind of the same team going from 7, 8, and 10, and 13, but then uh, Hiroyuki Ito's team would go from like 9 and 12, and, and now 16, possibly. I mean, that's what all the rumors are saying. Um, so that's kind of where this started. They, it's mostly like a large chunk of the team is coming from Final Fantasy Tactics. Some are coming on from seven and eight, um, but yeah, it's like this whole amalgamation of of these of a different kind of team moving in to do a Final Fantasy, yet a send off to all the old <laughs> Final Fantasy games. Right, right. So I, I just think that that's interesting. Right. So I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people take umbrage in the speed of the battle system of Final Fantasy IX. Uh, at one time, designed to be the fastest battle system in the series is really interesting, yet turned out to be the slowest, Yep, especially after eight. <laughs> and this is uh, the reason for this, apparently, this, of course, this I got this also from that podcast from Alex Donaldson, uh, was that the system couldn't handle the battle system like the the playstation couldn't handle it in their in their early builds of the game Mm. and the frame rate uh wouldn't be acceptable at the speed that they wanted to do it in and uh here's what sakaguchi said uh he said with the speed down the game almost feels like it's turn baits so they they had this super slow battle speed and then they were like okay with it and that was their justification uh you know it kind of feels like turn based if you yeah. if you pull down the active time battle speed to ridiculously slow amounts except it's not <laughs> it's not and i i put a little caveat here you'll see in the show notes says personally i think he's talking out of his ass <laughs> yeah well the final the battle against you know, Kuja at the very end of the game definitely shows that where he spams his oh spell. God. That's not a fucking turn based system. I'm sorry. <laughs> it would be him and then my turn, not his turn, his turn, his turn, and then whoever's left. No, that's not necessarily true. It depends on their speed is how many turns they get. True, but Do you remember this? I remember it in ten. <laughs> there were only there's only like four Final Fantasy games that are truly turn based, so Yeah. Yeah. But I hate it. So, despite the slow system, which we'll talk about plenty in this episode, Final Fantasy IX was still a success. Um, Here's a little bit of history about its release, though. It was delayed to avoid conflict with the release of Enix's Dragon Quest, a game... 
Uh, the game was released on July 7th, 2000 in Japan and made it to North America on November 13th. A couple months later, Europe got it in February 2001. I'm not sure if I said that paragraph right, but they <laughs> at the time, um, Enix was a separate company and then there was Square and Enix had Dragon Quest and Square had Final Fantasy and they were both kind of going head to head. And so they moved the release date for Final Fantasy IX to avoid the new Dragon Quest game. So they didn't want to lose, essentially? Yeah. Dragon Quest, I think, is actually sold more in Japan. Maybe. But Final Fantasy sells more elsewhere. Final Fantasy is really high up there. All right. Yeah. So the game didn't sell as well as the previous two entries, but it was still a hit. Eventually, it ended up selling 5.3 million copies as of 2003. So yeah. that's that's pretty solid. Yeah, that is uh, that is very solid. Um its legacy now is a quiet one. We'll talk about the legacy later on in our podcast about our opinions on the legacy. Um, it never had a sequel. It was the smallest release on the PlayStation, and it was released when the PS2 had already arrived on store shelves. Uh, many gamers, perhaps unfamiliar with the roots of the series, were turned off by the art design. Uh, perhaps something as simple as a logo not designed by Yoshitaka Amano, which I think is the only logo in the main series that was not designed by him. Uh, I don't know who it was designed by, um... Anyway, that could throw someone off. But alas, the game was still critically acclaimed and received many accolades at the PlayStation Awards and, uh, of course, has very positive reviews from multiple gaming publications. As it now stands, Final Fantasy IX is the highest, uh, Metacritic, has the highest Metacritic score of any Final Fantasy on that site. Wow. Yeah, so... Uh, if anything, there's at least one person who thinks the game is a bigger success than 7 or 8. And here's an IGN interview. Uh, here's a little thing from the Gooch. The upcoming Final Fantasy IX, this title, currently under development, is based on a reflection of all the previous works in the series. The coming installment is my favorite. It is closest to my ideal view of what Final Fantasy should be. He's very strong about that, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> He, he likes Final Fantasy IX a lot. So, Caleb, um, let's talk about the making. Uh, let's not talk about the making of. We just did. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at this uh, stupid list here that I have our outline for, and I, of course, read the first thing on the top. Let's talk about the story. So, Final Fantasy IX's story starts out pretty much the same as every Final Fantasy story with an awesome cinematic. Awesome cinematic. Yeah, the game's... FMV sequences, they're, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're particularly spectacular in this one. Yeah, they're. I mean, for the for the three PlayStation games, I mean, really, this easily one, better this one than the stands seven out just in terms of its uh, in terms of the quality of animation. I'd say. Oh yeah, definitely. It, the movements look better. The characters look better. It's smooth. Right. It looks really good. So at the beginning of the game, we're we're brought into this one city called Alexandria, which we return to many times. Yes. Uh, throughout the whole game, and uh, of course we got our th weird theater troupe, and then our weird queen watching mm -hmm. over. And I think Vivi is just in town wandering around at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I think you. Are, do you play Vivi first or Zidane? I can't remember. Who I'm you pretty sure. First. Oh, I think he plays a day. Yeah, you do, and then you play. And then you find his boss, and they fight the boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and so you have to make you have to put on this play called uh, "I Want to Be Your Canary." I do believe is the play. And there's this there's this part with Zidane, and he has to like do this little sword fight thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what did you think about that little mini game, the sword fight? Uh, the sword fight was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed it. It was a lot better than all of the mini games similar to that in Final Fantasy VIII. Those ones were just painstaking and made me <laughs> want to rip out what hair I have left. This is like the only mini game I can think of in Final Fantasy IX. They really, they really didn't bring it back from seven. All those little mini games from seven, then a couple in eight, and now there's like yeah, nothing. Yeah, maybe it's nine. because of the trauma that the ones in eight caused, like the train part. Where yeah, it's the like, trains. <laughs> here's this forty minute description of this thing that's gonna take you five minutes. <laughs> I was like, when I was first playing that, I was like, God, I'm, not, I'm never going to be able to beat this part. So uh, I satisfied the queen. Oh. Yeah. I satisfied her twice. Oh, I'm sure you did. <laughs> it's like, the You're queen pro, was, Caleb. <laughs> yeah. The queen was satisfied. Would you like to try again? I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. 
We'll satisfy her extra. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, nothing like that purple faced. No. Oh. <laughs> The queen. Yeah. All right. So you find out that you're actually a troop there sent by Sid, mm -hmm. who's an Oglop. You find out also uh, later on. And in case you don't know what an Oglop is, it's like a really bouncy frog, essentially. Basically, but he is turned into a frog later. True. So it's like an... Uh, They're different. It's something. It's like a frog bug thing. Yeah. It's more like a, a fat bug, I would assume. Yeah, I guess. I, I really don't I, yeah, know. Either. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what an oglop is? We don't get an HD cutscene of them, so we can't <laughs> truly judge them. Anyway, you're sent there to capture the princess of Alexandria, Princess Garnett. Mm -hmm. um, but while you're going to kidnap her as a Dane, uh, you find out that she's actually trying to run away at the same time. Man, that is convenient. Yeah. It's really convenient. The same actually. time as the, as the show that was going on. Nice. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then she uh, ends up taking part of the show. You know, her and Steiner, mm -hmm. they take part of it. and They think it's like some kind of weird battle thing that's yeah, going on and in Steiner the show. Steiner is completely clueless as to everything going on, so we <laughs> thought that she got stabbed. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like freaking out like he failed. <laughs> anyway, um, they get her to go along with her. Well, not that they had to try, really. Right. But uh, then the queen gets pissed off, uh, shoots some uh, cannonballs at him. Yeah, some hooks. <laughs> and that's a really awesome cutscene too. Just that that battle as the uh, as the Tantalus troop is going away. Yeah, that was a good one. It was a good one. And then, uh, of course, uh, I think due to damage done to the ship, you crash. Mm -hmm. uh, on your way back to Lindblom. Into the evil forest. Into the evil forest. In yes. case you were wondering, it's evil. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's a pretty messed up place and there's a really weird scene in there. And I I was kinda weirded out at this point because I, I found this Garnet doll in the, the Cinna dude's room. Right. Like on his bed. And then later he references it. He's like, oh, I can't sleep without my Garnet doll. Yeah, and I'm then like, you just feel a little sick to your stomach. Yeah, I'm like, what is wrong with you, dude? She's a kid. <laughs> <laughs> of course, with what we read earlier, who knows? But it was it was odd. But I, you know, you get out into this forest, and it's this kind of foreboding, evil, gloomy place. Mm -hmm. And it's evil. It is. It comes alive and uh, <laughs> tries to kill you. It does. And it captures your good buddy Blank. It does. When it, when it all turns to stone, I assume just because it's pissed off or something. Uh, yeah, your buddy your buddy Blank is now Blank. Yep. It's just nothing. He's stone. And uh, eventually you have to, like, there's this one section somewhere later on, which we probably won't talk about, but you got to go get, like, ingredients to get super soft or whatever yeah. it's called. And, uh, and, you know, they bring him back. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you still got to make it to Lindblom, uh, as far away from Alexandria as, as possible, and you go through this ice cavern where you meet one of the three black waltzes mm -hmm. um, that the queen has sent um, to capture Garnett, I believe. And uh, I remember everybody passing out, right? Mm -hmm. And then it was just Zidane taking on this, this black waltz. Uh, what did you think about that? I think that was the first... I, well, I guess it wasn't the first boss. It was like the third, but... That one was a pain. I actually died the first time. And I did, didn't, you? I I did didn't, Oh, uh, I did too. I did too. Yeah. I didn't save at the Moogle that was in there. I didn't. I went the other way. Oh my God. So I had to start Dude, the whole sucks. ice cavern over. Yeah, I was pissed. I was like, fuck, that was like I was an pissed hour. enough saving at the Moogle, and then there was a long cut scene before mm -hmm. you actually get to the waltz. I had to get to him again. Yeah. <laughs> and get all the treasures. I think I... I think you're supposed to go for the waltz first, and I went for a summon first, and I think that was the mistake. Mm. Or it could be the opposite way around, but either way. Yeah, that was a cool cutscene, though. Yeah, it was cool stuff. I enjoyed it. Uh, and then, of course, once you get out of the ice cavern, you get to this strange village where there's this goddamn lady farming in front of this chest. I can see the fucking thing through the, the plants, and she won't get out of the way. I don't know when... Oh, is that that? Is that where you were talking? You had to no, go back. No, that's not where I'm talking about. That's in the what windmill. What the fuck is that item? It's in the there? windmill that I have no idea how to stop, but you can't do it while the mayor's in town. All right, yeah, all right. But yeah, so there's, there's only like one section of the game where you can actually go back and. Yeah. yeah. So they go to this village, and it used to be a huge farming village, apparently, and everyone's like freaked out that there's no one farming. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, they're creating the yeah, black mages. The black mages. That we, that these lifeless seen. dolls, so to speak. Right. So it's a really 
this section of the game is really eye-opening for Vivi, who has no idea what he is or where he comes from, really. Yeah, he sees all these people that look just like him that don't talk to him. For the first time in his life, he, yeah. he sees someone that looks like him. So, yeah, there's the, that's where I think the theme of identity kind of comes out in this game. Because uh, both Sedane and Vivi, they have no idea where they come from. Right. They just don't, they just don't know, and it's strange when they finally see beings that look like them. Right, they're not used to that. They're not. And I mean, in this area, you end up fighting a second Black Waltz and then a third one in mm-hmm. quick succession. Yeah. And the third I one... I don't think there's a save in between the there's, second there isn't. and third. <laughs> Which was annoying. scary. This oh, yeah. game did that a lot. It was frightening. <laughs> but uh, after the third one, I mean, we get this awesome cinematic that was that was pretty rough actually to watch i was like geez because what happens is the black waltz comes back after you fight him and he he's chasing down the ship that you're on and he blasts you and a bunch of the other black mages that you took on the ship with you that like are you know controlling the ship and Mm -hmm. vivi just watches as they all their lifeless bodies just fall off the ship and die yeah. And he's trying to, like, reach out to him, and he catches one of their hats, and I'm like, God, <laughs> that is that is cold. I feel like that it's was... It's the part of the game that's like, let's get serious. Yeah, it's... I feel like I had... <laughs> I felt Disturbing. I felt more emotion for Vivi in that scene than I did, than I ever did when Aerith died in 7. Like, I cared more about Vivi an hour or two hours into the it's game. It's painful to watch that. Than I did. I mean, and you're wondering, like, as this thing... As a black mage that BB is, what it would be like to see all your relatives? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the only people you've ever seen that look like you just yeah, get blasted just and they're lifeless, fall to the ground. I mean, and it was it was probably bad enough that he tried to talk to him and no one would, and they were just kind of doing their duties, and they never mm-hmm. realized they had consciousness at this mm-hmm. point, and then they all just get killed. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, it's a powerful scene. Yeah, it was and good. If you haven't played nine, that's one of the high points right there. Yeah. Um. So, I think from there you finally you go through the gate. Uh, and then you finally meet Sid in Lindblom. Mm-hmm. You find out he's an Oglop at, at that point. Princess Garnett hasn't seen him since she was a child, I believe. Right. And you also find out that he was the one that sent the theater troupe to go kidnap her. Right, because he knew that the queen was an evil bitch. So. Yeah. <laughs> so he wanted Garnett out of there yeah. for her own and safety. And then I believe you find out that Bermesia was invaded by Alexandria. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, you go to investigate. Mm-hmm. And um, on the way there, I believe that's when I got, uh, what's his name with the tongue? He, she. He, she? Yeah. Quinnaquin? Quinnaquin. Nice. That's right. I don't know why I couldn't remember his name at that moment. I didn't use him that much, to be honest. I, I liked him. You liked him? Yeah. Yeah, so that's when you get Quinnaquin. You find out he really likes frogs and really likes food. Yeah, what and a... And his, like, <laughs> father thing is, like, uh, go out and see the world. And yeah, he says... He just joins your party. You know, do the the quest of, what was it, Goramond, something like that. I don't remember. Where it's like, go try all sorts of foods all around the world to be po- more powerful, which it makes sense because you learn spells by eating a low health, certain low health enemies. Hmm. So that's what he wanted him to do. He wanted him to go become a powerful blue mage. Oh, okay. Essentially. All right. Through eating. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, what about that mog in that uh, swamp? That guy was awesome. Like, oh, yeah, there's these tutorials that pop up with, with Mog. Yeah, and it's got this sweet-ass like, song in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. There's one little Mog talking to his older brother, Yeah, Mog, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty... The, the older brother, Mog, I think is a little too cool for school. Yeah, the little dude's like, gosh, you sure know a lot, bro, and then he, like, turns and looks off into the distance, he's like, I know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> like... Wow. Oh, you're a douche. Yeah. <laughs> you're a douche, bro. Yeah, it'd be sweet if he was just, like, on a cliff, just, like, looked out onto the world, and he's like, oh, I know. <laughs> That's how it felt. I'm having trouble with my mic here. Just give me one second. The fucking cord slack is really annoying. Okay, there we go. All right, so when you're in Bermesia, which is the mouse city of forever reigning, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, oh, yeah, is where uh, Freya is from, which is a character we meet earlier that we forgot to mention during the Great Hunt scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I let her win the hunt. Well, I didn't let her. I lost, but... You let her win? <laughs> yeah, I, you know. She won in mine, too. I wonder if she wins every time if you lose. You... I don't know. I don't... I'm not sure who... Because I know each person has specific items. I looked it up. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, so I guess not, but she won on both of ours. Yeah. So she's pretty good, apparently. Yeah. It was it was a cool scene. Did you try to win the, the hunt? Yeah, I did. I yeah. was close. I was only like 70 points behind her. There was a point about midway through the time when I was like... I'm not going to be able to do this. <laughs> she was rocking you? Yeah, she was destroying me, and I was having trouble finding creatures. I thought it was pretty funny when I got to one area, and then, like, I saw Vivi run by really fast, and then, like, the monster was chasing What was, was going to be Vivi's prize? I forgot. <sighs> I can't remember. Was it, like, a kiss from someone or something? It was something. Oh, it was a date with the princess, It was I think. a date with the princess. Yeah. I think you're right. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> and he, like, doesn't care, because he's, he's a doll. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, that was... Oh, he's just a doll. Yeah, yeah, that was a cool part. All right, so the mice people... They're devastated. And then you overhear uh, plans or something with uh, Kuja, Beatrix, uh, Beatrix, who's smoking hot, of course. Yeah. And then uh, the Purple Queen. And uh, then you had to fight Beatrix. Yeah, and during this, before you fight her, you learn basically that Kuja, this new, mysterious, nearly naked man, is oh, some God, like... the banana hammock, dude. Yeah, it's like more like a... Oh, it's so disturbing. It's more like a banana shield. He's got like these long, flowing locks of hair. He's got this really like pristine face. He's got these wide hips. And then a banana hammock, and you find out it's a dude. Yeah, because he's not wearing a shirt. Yeah. It's a dude. I thought it was a chick before I played this game. I, honest to God, did not know. Until I looked it up, and Cody was like, no, Kuja's like, dude. And I'm like, I don't think so, Cody. And then I looked it up, and I'm like, what the hell? Every is? time I saw Kuja throughout this game, until he was like in trance at the end, I was just thinking about him and his thong. Yeah. It was he, just so He was gross. pretty awesome looking in trance, though. It wasn't nearly as disturbing. No, it wasn't as disturbing. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so... The the naked man is sitting there conspiring, and then of course we do get to fight Beatrix, who is really hot in this the game. The most beautiful woman in Final Fantasy IX. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we gave it to Dagger before, just defaultly because I didn't really know who Beatrix was before I played it. Oh, in our little uh, yeah little thing that we did, but I was a long wrong. Time ago. If that was the case, <laughs> very wrong. So was I. Something about the sash covering her eye and the yeah everything. Anyway, that that's the end of. Disc one, though, is that Beatrix fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, of course, you see Kuja fly away, which I believe is the last part. Uh, (laughs) Kuja and his his fucking thong. Uh, It's all coming back. (laughs) That was a short first disc. Yeah, it was like seven hours. I think I I was about there at at eight hours. It was was about the last end of that. And uh, compared to the first disc of eight and, and seven... Yeah, seven especially. Seven especially, uh, super short first disc. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a really, really short game at that point. Yeah, you're like, if every if every disc is this long, it's 28 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be possible at that rate, but I it would be tough mm-hmm. to speed run into 28. I think. Then you go from there to Trino to talk to Dot. Dr. Tot? Yeah, Dr. Tot. He's uh he's got a cool design actually. I know I know he's a bird, but uh. The the masks they used to have uh, back in like was it probably like sixteen maybe fourteen to sixteen hundred around Leonardo da Vinci's time the doctors would actually wear masks kind of like that like have you ever seen in Assassin's Creed no you've never seen anything no. in Assassin's Creed so they they wear, they have masks on with like long beaks and that's something that they they did to symbolize their status as huh. doctors so that's kind of cool no how idea. they did that with a bird in this game okay. But yeah, Dr. Cool. Todd, he's more sane and cool than the last doctor, the freaking, what's the dude's name with the frilly shit around him? The uh, Dr. Odine? Odine, yeah. yeah. It just reminds me of like eye drops so for some reason. I just think eye drop, like this little bottle. To... <laughs> yeah, he was he was weird. But yeah, Dr. Todd's a pretty chill guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you get these, there's a side quest there where you collect these coins throughout the game and get various items elixirs and gill and whatnot but uh yeah yeah that was the part that you're forced to play the cards i believe yep in the city 
Mm-hmm. Fuck the card game, dude. Yeah, I actually you had didn't to mind win. It. You had to win three rounds. Yeah, uh, you did. You could restart. I think the first two, but I think the third one you had to win legitimately. Mm-hmm. You did. <sighs> I I didn't lose. I didn't understand the game. Uh, like until the end, when I was like, oh, kind of get it. Yeah, I know you didn't lose. I didn't lose the first one for no reason whatsoever. I, I kind of understood it when I played, because I read some of the tutorials from uh, Mog and the Swamp. Oh, you read them. Yeah. I didn't read shit. <laughs> <laughs> I say fuck tutorials. That's yeah. what I say, yeah. Shouldn't be necessary. After Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. Gotta skip I skip every those tutorial. Two. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not going to spend 20 minutes listening to your text box, Quistus. Anyway, Alexandria, I think, is going after... The next place they go to is Clara. Is that how you pronounce it? Clara, Clara, yeah. Slayra. The big uh, the big tree. It's a, Yeah, it's a big tree village protected by a giant tornado thing. Yeah. Just, like, strong winds, I guess. And uh, their little harp that's protecting them it breaks. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the wind goes away and then Alexandria comes and invades with their black mage army. And uh, you're trying to protect the people of, of Clara, which I think has more fox people in it. They were from, uh, they took shelter in Clara. Oh, okay. So they weren't So it's the Burmesia people that were going over there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Burmesians were... I, I could be wrong about that. Having refuge. But uh, that's a really sick part because I was like, go left, go right, stay there. And I was like, go left, go left. Yeah, because the black mages are coming down and you're trying to protect uh, citizens in, uh, in this place. And, mm-hmm. of course... Every single option, I'm pretty sure, is the wrong option. I actually was able to save, like, four of them. But the problem... I don't think I saved any. The problem with it, I was, like, really stressed. I was like, God, everyone's getting fucked. I'm, like, making the wrong choice here. They're all getting fucking killed in front of me. <laughs> this kid's parents just got blasted. Oh, I'm that like, part was Jesus. horrible. And, and then I saved, like, four of them. I'm like, okay, some of them are alive. And then the princess... Or not the princess, the queen summons fucking Odin and destroys the entire place. Right. Just nukes it. No one lives. That was another one of the great cutscenes though, is Odin coming out of the sky. Yeah, that like, was... Galloping, galloping down and... That was It was sweet. epic and horrible at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, man. And I think at this point, they get a hold of Garnett. Yeah, they, uh, they captured Garnett and they're taking her back to Alexandria Castle to... Siphon, I guess, whatever the procedure is to remove <laughs> Edelons from the body. Yeah, the summons. We can just call them summons. They, yeah. They keep changing the name of what summons are. You Guardian know. forces, Edelons, whatever. It's a summon. Right. They're, they're trying to remove her summons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you get to play as uh, Beatrix here, which is godly. Yeah, you do, because you're trying to go save him. And I think at this point, is this when Beatrix kind of turns yeah. against the queen? Yeah, she does. Okay. Because she chooses the princess. Because mm-hmm. the queen's evil as shit. Yep. And, uh, of course, you get her, at least. And then uh, I think Lindblom is attacked next, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how is Lindblom attacked? Do you remember? <sighs> was it? <sighs> that was when the black mages... Yeah, the black mages. They like There was a pretty down. sweet cut scene where all the naked guards were getting blasted by the... The black mages. It was a pretty. There were some really good cutscenes for the fighting mm-hmm. with these black mages. They were pretty much dominating the fight too. From what I saw, I don't know how Lindblom survived, but I don't know either. But I remember later on in the game, Lindblom is under construction and yeah, they're repairing because the, it uh, because of the damage done. Um, and uh, let's see here. See after that, there's the self-aware black mage village. You find out about. Yeah, the you find out that there's like this. Co- collection of black mages, I guess, that's created the society. Yeah, that they, the they they were left behind and, and gained some kind of consciousness and yeah. decided to make their own village. Mm-hmm. And uh, they call each other whatever their you know their number was. Um, and uh, so, like, what was it? Black, Mister Eight Eight Eight, Mister Yeah, whatever, blah blah blah. And uh, at that point, I think. Was there a point when, like, Vivi was thinking about staying there instead of going on with everybody else? Um, 
No, he wanted to. He really wanted to visit it. I'm not sure if he wanted to stay or okay. not. I was thinking. I, I got that impression that maybe like the rest of the party would leave Phoebe behind hmm. to be with those people. There was some cool stuff there. Like some of them were. Uh, they had this chocobo egg that Quinnaquan was trying to eat. He wanted to like crack right, it open right. and make an omelet or something. And they were trying to raise the chocobo. Yeah. Like, and it was at, I think it was at that point though that I think Vivi realized his own mortality and that it could be a very short lifespan. Yeah, that's what they told him. Was it how many years was it? Was it one year or I'm was not it sure. Longer than that that the black mages stay alive? It wasn't very long. Vivi was I'm getting the number one and the number four, so it could be like four years or something like that. It wasn't very long. And they talked about basically they, they just stop. They don't ever address it as They death. don't stop, but we know what it is. Yeah. We know that it's mortality, which is another theme going throughout this, this story of this game is right. mortality. Not just identity, but also mm -hmm. mortality. Um, Vivi basically kind of breaks down and is pretty distraught for the next little while. So the thing that's powering all of this is the mist, this weird power that it, it's coming from the Ifa tree. And they go to stop the Ifa tree. Is that correct? Um, yeah. On the on the way, they do pass through the uh, the freaking village of the, the dwarves. The dwarves yeah. yeah. With the rally ho. Which we haven't seen dwarves in this series for a, series for a while. I it's think true. it's five, maybe? Maybe four. I think it might have been four. Yeah, it might have been. I can't remember if there were dwarves. Yeah, because there were dwarves in Final were. Fantasy One. Yeah, there were oh, dwarves yeah. in I think doing three and four. So that's yeah. that was interesting. To yeah, see dwarves again. And uh, basically, there's a scene. I can't remember why why, but they had to they had to be married to actually go through the, to the that's next. That's right. Part. That's right. So uh, they perform the ceremony on you know Zidane and dagger at this point because she changed her name to conceal her identity mm -hmm. and then are, there's also an option to watch the scene where uh, Quinnaquen and Vivi get married <laughs> yeah. and it's it's pretty funny actually yeah I did that too man. I really enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> he's like I'm so happy <laughs> you make it to the village of summoners where I believe you find well you find Aiko on the way don't you yeah you find Aiko like uh, hanging off a cliff or something right and you rescue her and you go with her to her you know her place and she's fallen in love with Zidane through yeah. the rest of the game she's like six years old right no she's I thought she was like six I don't think so I think she's look if you know the age of that little girl you put it down on I the think forums. she's like 16 man I'm telling you no I think she's like six <sighs> yeah. she's just a midget no she's like six dude I think they actually aged her in the game like they Did said they? what her age was yeah I don't remember being that low I though. think it was six yeah Anyway, you find her. She's trying to impress Sedane this whole time. Yeah, there's a cooking scene where... There's a cooking Queen scene. Gwen helps her cook. She can't. Then you have to go destroy the Ifa tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's talk about that boss fight at the bottom of there. How did you... The Ifa tree boss? Yeah. How did yeah you it wasn't like too bad. I, I, you can cast life on him and insta-kill him, though. It's the oh, fuck. That's right. You told me that after I had, like done the work to kill it yeah it was he was a yeah. big because a lot of dealer. things in that area in the ifa tree area a lot of a lot of those things were zombie yeah right so so it would make sense to try that on the ifa tree but i just didn't <laughs> right. and instead i beat him down but it i think i only i think it only took me one try anyway so yeah he's he does a lot of damage but you can kill him yeah but i was still. able to do it there wasn't, until the end of the game, there wasn't really any boss that it was, like, super rough. Yeah. There was one other one that I died on, but it was because I was being retarded and trying to get all the abilities for everybody, yeah. and then I was like, okay, fuck you, I'm going to come in with everything, <laughs> and then I wasted him. So, I have a tree area was, I thought it was pretty cool, with all the yeah. mist coming out, and you're traveling down this tree, and, you know, you fight the, the heart of the Ifa tree. To stop the mist. Yeah, to stop yeah. the mist. Uh, and then, uh, I can't remember how Kuja is involved here, but, um, I know you have to go back to Eco's village, the summoner village. You yeah. find out that Garnett was obviously there as a little girl and was probably adopted by the queen in some way. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. And, uh, and then at that point you find Amaranth. 
can't remember what he's doing there. But do you remember the fight with Amaranth? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love how in the fight I hit him for like seven or 8,000 damage. And then when, he, when I got him, he had like 1,500 health. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> You're lying to me. You have more health than that. I know it. <laughs> anyway, it's semantics. But... Yeah, that was that was cool, and I thought I was going to use him a lot because he seemed like he was pretty powerful. He was a high damage guy, yeah. At but the he time. was kind of a clone of Zidane for a lot of it. He had he you could get similar moves with stealing, and he had a similar play style. So, yeah. so you didn't end up using him very much. Not really. He was in the secondary party for sure. There was the one party where you had to like have no mages in it, so he was useful then. But yeah. because I didn't use him that much near the end of the game, he was too under leveled. That he yeah. wasn't doing nearly as much as he could have been, I guess, at Plus, that point. Plus, there's a very specific in-game party that we both used. Yeah. It's awesomeness. Yeah. So. It's, a great, it's a great party, and we'll talk about that in the gameplay. Of course. Um, I have this here thing that says Bahamut against Kuja. Do you know why I put that note down? <laughs> yeah, when you, go back to, when you go back to Alexandria and Trino, um, basically... You remember the fight scene between the queen and Kuja? Like, Kuja betrays the... Or no, the queen betrays Kuja, and she attacks him with Bahamut when he's flying around on his dragon deal. Okay, yeah. And then... Yes, I remember. He's flying around. That part's cool. makes Bahamut go crazy, essentially, by using the eye in the sky, which ends up being the ship by the end Mm -hmm. of the game. The, like, weird dimension-traveling ship and makes Bahamut attack the queen and kills the queen. Right. And there's like a little scene with the princess. With the princess and the queen and you yeah. almost feel sorry for the queen at that point. But For like a half a second. Yeah, for like yeah, half a second. And of course you're back in Alexandria uh, where the princess is getting ready to become uh, the queen. Right. Herself. Um then I think you're attacked again, though, aren't you? Uh, they go to Trino gets attacked, and remember Trino that's where gets attacked. that's where Garnet and Eco kind of use their powers to summon Alexander, who wastes behind. Oh, because Garland, they thought Garland was going to stay behind and rule, and then she decided to go along with the party. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, the Alexander uh, versus Bahamut scene is sweet. Yeah. When they, like, decide to, like, bring their powers together and then take on uh, Bahamut with uh, this giant castle <laughs> thing. Yeah, and it wastes him. It is a awesome cinematic at that point. Um, and uh, I got to hear it says, uh, try to get a Dolan's from Ico. Who's trying to do that, Kuja? Yeah, that's when Kuja... Yeah. Tries to basically siphon the summons from Ico as well. Mm-hmm. And at that point, her secret Idolin slash summon, whatever you want to call it, Mog that he, she's had the whole time, right. like goes trance mode and basically fends Kuja off. And then Kuja sees that and realizes, oh, maybe I can use trance too. Well, that's why they weren't able to get the Idolins from Mog. I guess he was interfering in some way. Yeah. Or from uh, Ico because Mog was there. Yeah, Mog wouldn't let him. Yeah. And then uh, then I think we're getting to the near near the end of this three right here. Um, somewhat. somewhat uh, there's yeah. also the part so where... Kuja goes to betray Garland mm-hmm. uh, in order to get his power, I'm assuming. And then, um, and then at this point, you're going around and you're trying to open a portal to Terra. Right. You basically, Kuja, when he captures... Uh, well, this is actually before the stuff with Ico. When he okay. captures Ico, he sends you, you and, uh, I can't remember, it's like a specific party that you have to go with, and you go to that Olivert place. Do you remember that place? With the, like, remix of the main theme. Sure. With the mirrors and the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he sends you on this quest to go grab these, uh, these four pieces of... These four mirrors. Yeah, these four... Which I think are part of a crystal. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, after you get that, and that's that's a good area to level up, too. You get a yes, lot of experience yes, yes. Shit in there. Gotta fight the thing with the mirrors. I hate the mirrors, but still. <laughs> so you go, after that, you basically go around and... Uh, yeah, he's captured your entire party, except for... Yeah. And he he makes you, in order to release them, he makes you go do stuff for him. Which opens the port to Terra, portal to Terra. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm trying. I'm I'm remembering this now. I'm I'm having trouble for some reason. Um, yeah, there there was those scenes. You get the the mirrors, and then your party. Actually, the other party escapes on their own later on because of Sid, right? Yeah, you have that really brutal part where you have to sneak oh past my the, God. the little beast as Frog Sid. Yeah, there's there's a little thing in a in a bird cage, and every time it turns towards you, you have to restart. But you have like a one minute timer or something on it. And you can only, like, kind of sneak, and it randomly turns around, and yeah. you have to be still when it turns around, and it is the most frustrating part of this fucking game. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was... At the same time, it's hilarious, though, because, like, like... <laughs> <laughs> the animation of The animation frog, like... of the frog moving in slow motion towards the... The, the key. key. And the creature turning around going, like, huh? <laughs> it was... <laughs> It was still freaking funny. <laughs> yeah, the thing's like a T-Rex, and they only respond to movement. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was uh, an interesting part. Yeah, and that's how you get out of the... That's how that party gets out of the prison. Right, and you also find... Uh, is that the part where you find Sid's wife? Yeah. Yeah. And she turns him back into a human a little bit after this. Right, once you right. get back to... Back to town, essentially. Back to town. Um... So your whole party's together, and they decide to open up. They had to put all those pieces in certain spots, didn't they? Right, and then there was, like, a collaborate effort to fight these certain bosses. Mm -hmm. And you only ended up actually having to fight the... Just the one with um, the Quinnequin and Zidane. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. You get a really good sword from that dude. Yeah, and it opens up the the portal to Terra, which mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the portal, but uh, <laughs> that's what it opens up. And there's an interesting scene uh, that you were talking about uh, off of the uh, off the podcast when the queen turns uh, Sid back into a human. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain? <laughs> well, I, I think there was a sex scene there because. He basically, after he gets turned back, he's, like, apologizing to her, and he's like, no, I do love you, and she's like, just never do that again, and then, like, they kind of embrace, and then it plays the little, the end music, the music that your party went to sleep. Yeah. And I, and your party wakes up in an inn, but I'm pretty sure that was a sex scene between the, <laughs> the regent Sid and I'm, his wife. I'm pretty sure it was, too. Nice. Like, Yeah. So that's like the third sex scene we've come across, implied sex scene. Yeah. In the series. So there was the one with the the moon person and Tara's mother. Mm hmm And then there was also uh of course, um Cloud and Tifa at the end of this at this two, two in Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah. And now there's Sid and his wife, whose name I can't remember right now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and of course you take your party to, to, to Terra, cause I think you're just still following Kuja at this point. This, this game is mostly a game about following Kuja yeah. and whatever Kuja's doing and then protecting, um, certain cities that are attacked by Kuja or the queen. Right. Right. It's, it's a, it's a series of those events. Um, and this is you still chasing after Kuja. You go into this, this other world that you don't really know anything about called Terra, but you know if you put those pieces there there are shrines mm -hmm. this is the first time we've had shrines since like final fantasy 4 i think right no five that's right yeah, five it's been had a while. Shrines. it has been a while <laughs> um in order to open up this world and you go in and it's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of zidane like creatures with the their humanoid monkey people yeah and they're lifeless just like the uh just the like dolls. the bb's yeah at least most of them are and zidane is super disappointed in all these uh all these things and yeah and like like vv kind of is freaked out by it yeah not as much as vv i don't think not as much but then again some of the black mages create their own village and kind of have their own thing going on but you find out the the only ones with like souls or like their ability to think for themselves there's only three of them there's the one girl monkey in the village and then you find out from garland that kuja is one of the monkey people yeah he must have shoved his tail in the uh it must have be it must be that bulge in the front of that song yeah he, he just tucked his tail under and then wrapped it around you know yeah. <laughs> oh it's disturbing 
<laughs> anyway, that's um, yeah, that part was was kind of sad. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and then you like see them being grown in the, uh, in the little tubes. In the tubes, yeah. Yeah, that was freaking. That shit was messed up, and uh, you follow Garland up. I think you're trying to kill Garland because you know he wants to destroy Earth so that the monkey people can reign. Yeah. Right. They basically are using the Efa tree to like channel souls mm-hmm. into Terra so that Terra can become uh, become. Gaia, Gaia. That's what Gaia. It is. You mean they they're trying to put souls into Gaia in order for Terra to take over Gaia? Um, I thought that's what it it's was. It's like a it's like the channel for souls. I okay. think they're the souls are supposed to be. There's something with the souls going into the the clones of Zidane, making them become they like have consciousness. Okay, I, I don't really remember that part. I'll it was it was a weird deal, but uh. Anyway, you come to confront Ga- uh, Garland, and then uh, Kuja is also there, I, I believe, because he's he's going to betray Garland at that yeah. point. And um, Kuja kills Garland once Kuja finds out from Garland that he is mortal. And Kuja decides at that point, if I'm going to die, I'm taking everyone with me. And so he kills Garland and then takes over Garland's... Um, his shit. Enterprise, yeah, yeah, and he blasts the shit out of the, the yeah. planet. And he too. also he also learns about the power of trance, I believe, at that point. Yeah, he becomes trance Kuja. Uh, he learned about it, or at least he was informed he, he, of it. He initially. became tranced. Yeah, and yeah, he definitely. stays tranced way His longer. Trance, than yeah, me. way longer than my trance. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, anyway, it's his, he's going to try to destroy, I think, both Terra and Guy. He's yeah. going to try to destroy everything. And um, so you got you got to go kill him. Yeah, Garland or speaks to you after him. death. And yeah, he does. Garland becomes a good guy for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Almost, yeah. He, he helps Zidane. And uh, there is still a chance, a chance, interestingly enough, that Zidane could become a Kuja-like figure, like Zidane feels at that point. We find out anyway during the last part that he could have became. That's what it was Kuja. intention. That's what Garland intended to do with Zidane, right? Because he sent Kuja, Kuja to he sent Kuja to Gaia, and he realized Kuja was causing some problems, mm-hmm. so he wanted Zidane to go kill him, basically, and yeah. rule and kill everything mm-hmm. for him. So at this point, you know, but Zidane's better than that. <laughs> yeah, he's a better clone. <laughs> you got to go up and uh, you got to go through the final dungeon of Memoria. Uh, and uh, and there's a godly kick the kick the butts of the final final bosses. Right, and before you go into the other planet, do you remember the awesome cutscene where the the shit's coming out of the portal, like the birds or whatever, and they're attacking, oh. and there's like that sweet scene with all the airships yeah. that Sid has, and they're yeah, blasting the things. That. Yeah, that one was, was a really cool. cool one too. It was like the very end of disc three when you get into into that area everybody's supporting you at that point yeah that's a good group effort (laughs) anyway so then you go you attack final bosses kill Kuja and then there's this thing called Necron because at the end you you Kuja's you know been knocked out or almost there he's he's been weakened to the point where he can't win yeah and he decides fuck everybody and then he casts Ultima Mm -hmm. on on your party and then they're passed out and then there's some dialogue that's like the the buddhist saying thing where it's (laughs) yeah it's the quote from the that yoda uses in star star wars star wars uh fear leads to anger anger leads to hate hate leads to suffering yeah (laughs) and then you're up to fight um necron which i don't even know what necron is Necron's like the balance of the universe. I tried to pay sort. really close attention to the dialogue after that. I could did not tell what he was. Yeah, he's he's just something. He's like the god. Essentially. He's there to destroy things, also. I guess. Yeah. But he wasn't. He didn't control Kuja. He was just there yeah. in the crystal. Mm-hmm. So what the fuck was Necron a, doing there? It wasn't really a bossception like it was in four. No, it wasn't bossception. It was, it was just a a main boss switch at the end. Kuja should have just been the well, last boss. It was kind of a triple switch because at first it seemed like it was going to be Kuja, 
and then it seemed like it was going to be Garland, and then Garland got knocked out by Kuja, so it seemed like Kuja again, and then after Kuja, Necron. Necron for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for more information on Necron, like on the internet, and I'm sure there's more theories about Necron somewhere, but I wasn't really looking into that. I was just, I just saw when I Googled Necron, does Necron ruin the ending of Final Fantasy IX? <laughs> and like a whole bunch of opinions about how stupid Necron, just him being there was. Yeah. But he was a difficult boss. <laughs> he was brutal. He was. Kuja was plenty hard himself. Yeah. So I don't I don't know why they felt like they had to bring in someone named Necron. But there was something else that I found out during when I was looking up behind the scenes on the, on this thing on on Final Fantasy IX that they changed the ending to the game eleven times. Are you serious? Yeah. And they apparently settled on Necron. <laughs> what were the other ones? I don't know. That's just w- what a number I saw was. Wow. They changed the ending to Final Fantasy IX 11 times. The other 10 must have been crappy. I guess. Anyway, so... At the end, um, everything is kind of exploding. They try to evacuate. They, they evacuate Terra, including like the the only other monkey person with a soul. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And uh they bring her to the black black mage village. Yeah, they bring all the monkeys there and they mm-hmm. basically learn from each other. Right. I might be skipping back behind right now. Well, but, that was uh, before the end. Yeah, that was before the end. But yeah, we forgot to mention that. <laughs> At the end though, uh shit's blowing up and like the ifa trees going crazy and uh you know it's just destroying shit. I'm not sure what's going on at that point, but the party gets out and Zidane decides, hey, I'm going to stay behind to go grab Kuja. And they're like, why? And it's like, well, he is kind of my brother. Yeah. Uh, I feel some sort of connection with him. And he's just down there. And then Zidane goes down there in this like incredible action sequence. <laughs> yeah. All these vines are all trying to tear at him. He goes and full he, monkey. He goes, too. he goes and <laughs> there's like a matrix part where he falls past Kuja and it like, the the camera stops and like swirls around and then Zidane keeps falling and of course hits the ground mm-hmm. and then Zidane realizes oh he's alive after the giant fall and uh, he goes to talk to Kuja and Kuja's like just leave me here or whatever and then uh, then he is then they're both engulfed by the uh, by the tree yeah and then we cut away and you think Zidane is dead <laughs> I thought he was dead too I was like geez I like I did too this time around because I mean it's been a long time since I played this game and then this time around I was like does Zidane really die like I don't remember that I didn't remember the ending so this was all a surprise to me also and then of course uh, there's like a there's a wedding right or not a wedding but a ceremony for the the princess there's a play going on yep and And then the princess uh, is all dressed up I think because she's going to become the queen yeah and um and that's when Zidane, of course, once again, is part of the theater troupe, mm-hmm. takes off his costume, and then he, like, puts his arms out for uh, for the princess, and then she goes down, and they, they hug, and then it ends. Yeah, and she, like, beats on him for a second, too. It's yeah, kind of funny. Yeah, because douchebag, you should have told me you were alive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then of course, like during the ending scene, everyone gets back together. There was Freya and her love interest, mm-hmm. who falls in love with her again, even though he doesn't remember what they had before. I can't remember what that guy's name was, but yeah, he had some kind of memory problem because of some battle, right? Yeah, right. And then there was uh, what else? There was Steiner Quino was was now cooking food for the for royalty. Yeah, he was. Cooking. Steiner was with Beatrix, mm-hmm. which. They had one other scene earlier on, and then... Yeah, where, like, a love note was supposed to be from Eco to, uh... Zidane, Zidane and was brought to Beatrix. She thought it was Steiner. Yeah, yeah. and then Steiner found but one. But everything works out. Steiner found one that he thought was from Beatrix. Right. It was kind of cool, actually. Yeah. I enjoyed that. And so, yeah, super happy ending to this uh, this game of identity and mortality and... Yeah. Uh, falling black mages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, just utter destruction from the Black Mages uh, of, you know, helpless fox um, mice mice people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so overall, 
I don't know. How did you feel about the story? I... Now that we have recapped. Now that we've recapped uh, for 45 minutes, yes. Uh, <laughs> the story, as I said, was mostly just about following Kuja, trying to stop violence. You usually fail. <laughs> and then eventually it became this kind of bossception with Garland. Like Garland just kind of shows up in the middle of the game and you now have a new threat, but then your old threat just takes over. Yeah. Basically. Um, I liked the themes in the game and certainly the part, the parts that dealt with identity as far as these main characters that don't know who they are or what they are. Um, those parts are always really powerful. However, uh, constantly going after Kuja, I never felt like I was on the edge of my seat. Like I was like, ooh, what's going to happen next, you know? Right. But um, overall, I thought it was okay. I thought it was an okay story. It was solid. It was solid. There was nothing I hated about it. Um, but there was also nothing that really stood out except for a couple of cutscenes that we talked about. I mean, I know our forum members love, love this game, but I think, uh, I don't know. The story just wasn't, it didn't turn me on too much. Yeah. Yeah. Just because, like, the first two discs in this game, I just have trouble remembering, honestly. Third disc, I'm like, okay, I remember <laughs> what you're doing here. Right. Um, I don't know. I kind of I kind of feel similar, similarly to that. It's, it, was, it was pretty solid for the whole part. I, I agree with you. I didn't feel that I hated a certain part or that I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to play this. Except for when I got to the very end. <laughs> I couldn't beat Necron, and I was like, fuck, I don't want to do Kuja again. <laughs> He's sick. I died yeah. to him twice the time before I even got past him. But I never really, I don't know, I never really felt super compelled. Like, I was on the edge of my seat. Yeah, I didn't feel that way either. I wasn't, like, super into the drama. The times when I was into it, I think the Vivi, like, line of story was really cool and then when you find out you know the connection between Zidane and Kuja that part's interesting but yeah yeah the queen and all that other shit yeah kind of forgettable yeah it was solid honest, but for yeah. me for me it was forgettable and I I could see that it was solid enough that you could probably follow along with it but it could have been how fast we were trying to push through this game or it could have been I don't know what it was but yeah, this game was hard for me to follow. Yeah, I don't. I doubt it was the speed. It's just, it was kind of a chase for yeah. Guja. Not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you had to, you know, you did a lot of things, getting airships going, getting Sid back to his normal state, so you mm -hmm. can. There were a lot it. of fun scenes on the way. Yeah, yeah. There was some good stuff. A lot of really good not, high def. Scenes not a ton there. of drama. No, I do kind of like the love theme in this game more than eight, though. The love, the love stories. Yeah, the love story. I think okay. it was better. Would Beatrix and Steiner? Uh, no, uh, even Zidane and Eco and Dagger. Zidane. Not Eco. Oh, uh, Zidane and Dagger. Yes, yeah. yes. It's pretty solid. You think so? And they actually, you know, both loved each other. So there's <laughs> there's that that's going for it. Yeah, but yeah, the they didn't even it, kiss at the end. It was just a hug. The themes at the end. At least I the think themes, so. The wide shot didn't really make it yeah. clear. The themes in the game made it really interesting, though. It yeah, was, it was pretty powerful. It's just, yeah, yeah. As far as the story goes, after was after six and seven, it just doesn't feel like a big, huge, epic um, story. There's a lot I think of that destruction. Might be it. But there was a lot of destruction. There were a lot of cool cutscenes. I don't know. There was something missing in it for me. I don't know what it was, and I think it's the same reason why 9 was forgettable before for me, as far as, like, when I played it a long time ago, when I was like, the heck was the story in Final Fantasy 9? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's how I felt. It was like playing the game over again, though, this time around, because I didn't remember hardly anything. I remembered theater troops. I remembered getting the princess. And uh, I remember the boss being a pain in the butt. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. accurate. And that was completely accurate. All right. So that's how we feel about the story. It's understandable if you guys disagree with us. But it's not that the story was bad, though. There were no sections of the story that I didn't like. Right. What about the... So maybe it was good. I... <laughs> 
I think it was it was decent at the very least. Like we said, yeah. there were parts that were really. interesting. It wasn't like how I feel about Final Fantasy V, where I was like, "Well, the first half sucks, second half's really good," or Final Fantasy IV, where like the ending blows ass. The ending to Final Fantasy IX is really good. It's a really yeah. nice happy ending. Uh, usually, I don't like happy endings, and so it makes great. sense too. <laughs> this one makes sense that everything went okay. Yeah, and then it wasn't like three or two or one where there was just problems. Yeah. Um, what about the characters, though? Because that's kind of kind of goes along with the, the with the story. I like Zidane. He's kind of like this uh, rogue womanizer guy. Yeah, I and can. he's funny. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's rare to see so far a funny Final Fantasy like main lead. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because most of them don't have that much of a sense of humor. Not really. I mean, Titus is just kind of a bumbling idiot. And, <laughs> and Squall and Cloud are like Brooding. super broody Introverted. kind of people. Yeah. yeah. And Tara is just kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. And naked. And naked sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe he has the most in common with Bart's. As far as yeah, the kind of like the just go. super pumped, ready yeah, to do yeah. shit. It's time, yeah, right. I enjoyed it as a main character. I, you know, a lot of times I always think of like the annoying blonde haired main Final Fantasy characters. At times, I'm like, yeah, it's so generic. But Zidane did feel a little different. I mean, mm-hmm. at least very much so from seven and eight's right. main lead, right. and the eight supporting cast. Including Vivi, who in some ways is kind of the main character for a lot of it. <laughs> I, I'm not going to argue that Vivi is or is not the main character because I think Zidane is the main character. I mean, with Kuja, the connection there. And then, yeah, Vivi's got a pretty solid part in the story too, but Vivi not has, as much. Vivi has the most interesting subplot of all the characters with oh, his yeah. identity issues, and it really just reflects Zidane's storyline. It does, yeah. So it's it's there to support Zidane's storyline. Yeah, I think it's it there to support Zidane really, too. Really good stuff in that. Yeah, because I think Zidane took his, you know, his similar news yeah, I better think because of seeing Vivi deal with it. Vivi is often cited as the most popular character of this game, and I'd probably say he's probably my favorite yeah. <laughs> character of the game. Um, might just have to be to do with the events around him and how he acts towards them. And he's this he's, tiny little dude. Yeah, he's a tiny little cute little guy. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> he is pretty awesome. Princess Garnett, not that uppity, um, not like a stupid... Uh, or lifeless female character. <laughs> yeah, they've been getting a lot better about those. They have, and um, her sense of adventure and you know trying to talk like the common people in that one scene and yeah. Dally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I found her entertaining. Aiko was annoying. I find the kid characters always annoying. Uh, for the most part. For the yeah. most part, yeah. The Rikus and the t- the Palam and Porum or whatever their names are. Uh, she was just kind of annoying, but it, you know she was kind of useful as a white mage in some parts. <laughs> yeah, when you didn't have dagger. Yeah, but it was she was six years old, so I kind of like let it go. I'd say and I liked Mog though. Yeah, yeah, Mog was cool. All the Moogles around Ico were cool. Yeah, I retract when I said a long time ago that I didn't really care for the Moogles. I, I think they're pretty cool. Yeah, first couple episodes of our podcast, we're yeah. like, fuck Moogles. The design, <laughs> the design is weird, but they they have a lot of charm, so yeah. I can't now, hate on them. Yeah. And they continue for a while. We both changed our minds on this. So. Yeah, yeah we, we were, were both, wrong. We were both Moogle haters. <laughs> but as we've played all the games in a row, yeah. the Moogles are becoming... They're much more like in my heart. <laughs> yeah, well, they help you like, crazy. That's true. They do. What about uh, what about Steiner? I thought Steiner was really dumb and caused me anxiety through parts of it, <laughs> where he's like, "I'm just like, shut up, man. Stop calling her by her name." But by the end, I thought he was a pretty solid character. He was. He had a cool little theme himself between you know battling what was what he felt was right with his duty and they weren't mm-hmm. the same thing. It was serve the queen. That's his duty. But the princess was the right path to take so he had an inner battle for a long time and he didn't choose his side until he saw that queen Braun was super evil yeah and threatened the princess that's when he changed his mind and then he became very helpful <laughs> yeah to the team yeah I, he was sick he was the only one dealing 9999 without a special move in the end he was a beast he was a good warrior <laughs> yeah yeah 
Uh, I like Steiner. I, uh, I'm, I'm exactly with you on that one. The, the change in Steiner. I didn't like him at the beginning. He was annoying. Yeah. Um, and the clank of the armor. Oh. And the clank of the- <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool effect, but it was cool for like 10 minutes. And after that, I'm like, right. oh. Right. So there was Steiner, and then who else was there? Oh, Quinn Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even sure if Quinn Quinn was a required party member. Um, Part of me thinks that you you, have you didn't to get need him. to get him. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. You get him as part of the story. Okay. When you come back through the swamp later. All right. That makes sense. <sighs> yeah. I liked him, though. I mean, I know you didn't care for him too much. I didn't care for him. It was the, it was the one character where I was like, this is just silly beyond all reason. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True. It would be that one, but he had some really good moves. His tongue just didn't make any sense. He was hungry. I I, I don't know. He licked like a, a lot of stuff. A nine foot long tongue. There was a there was some pretty he was kind of comic relief though for a lot of it. I felt like Steiner was comic relief. Steiner was the mistakes too. that com- uh, that Steiner makes but. for a while, yeah, but near the end like when they're in that village with the Zidanes and uh uh, Quinn Quinn comes in and he like he's like looking at the blue orb and he's like why you all look at blue orb it's like is it food I I lick and he like says something like if you say you say I you didn't say I couldn't lick it so I'm going to and then he licks it and he's like salty and then he looks over and there's the Dane there's like all sorts of shit where he's just talking about food and getting into trouble so it's kind of funny all right all right as far as part I found of the, him to be a distraction, but yeah, All right. it's part of the story, not necessarily necessary, but yeah. I know I know Caleb Craig loves the day or loves uh, Quinn Quinn. Yeah, yeah, for his own personal reasons, I'm sure. But yeah, <laughs> the share of physique together. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think Caleb is a blue mage. Not though. quite the tongue. No, no, thank God. <laughs> And let's see, we had those ones. Uh, we talked about Amaranth a little bit. He's kind of a dick, but... He's kind of like Shadow. I think they were, like, trying to recreate Shadow a little bit. Yeah? Yeah, he's liked... kind of a mysterious guy, lives by his own terms. He is a, a hired hand, yeah. just like Shadow. Yep, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of all he is, but he's... I guess he's got the cool factor going for him. Yeah. You get him a little late in the game. It's true. Like It's like disc two. Yeah, it's the end almost of disc two. Of, yeah, almost the end of disc two. So. I didn't mind him. I liked Shadow more, though. I think Shadow's character was cooler. Of course, he had With Interceptor. Interceptor. Yeah. <laughs> Amaranth didn't have an Interceptor <laughs> come in and fuck shit up. I liked Amaranth, and he was useful, and uh, so was Freya. What's yeah, Freya, especially when you first got her, she was sick. Her yeah. jump ability, it's always a good move. I I think I kept Freya for... Yeah, I kept Freya for the end. Did you really? Yeah, so my party was a little bit different than yours. Hmm. We'll talk about that. Um, I liked Freya, too. And, yeah. And her story. So. Her story was good. I liked all the characters. All the char- There's no character except for Aiko, maybe, that I really detest. Yeah, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I detest Aiko necessarily. I mean, I do agree with you. Most of the time, the kid character is pretty annoying, and they're just like I don't see the point to their existence in these games. Like it's like all right, we gotta have one really really fucking annoying character with these good <laughs> characters just to make it every time wash. We gotta yeah. have Yuffie, Riku, Palamiporum, uh, Ridia. <laughs> Pick one. Well, Ridia was Ridia was annoying at the beginning. I don't know. It was also a sad story. No, I'm getting Ridia mixed up with uh, someone else. I can't think of who it was, though. Ridia was a beast, yeah, even in yeah. the beginning. Because remember, she summoned Titan and, like, fucked you and Kane up. Yeah, it's not Ridia that I'm thinking of. No. It might be... It's definitely Palamut for him. Yeah, you yeah. could be mixing... And that's the problem with them, <laughs> is they're so... They're kind of generic, so you do get them mixed up. Which we aren't... We shouldn't be blamed for. <laughs> if they wanted us to remember every single character, they would have made them separate. They would have made them different <laughs> enough to remember. And um, that's why we do remember the ones that we do. I'm getting some someone mixed up. I think someone in five must have been annoying me. Yeah. But I can't remember. Doesn't matter. It but doesn't uh matter. Yeah, overall I think the character stories were pretty were really yeah. solid the characters were interesting and i think in, it, with eight it's the same way i think the characters were well drawn and unique so i think they might have gone even a step further with nine though with the characters mm-hmm. i think their stories were their backstories were better 
and they they made the story where it is. I think this the story itself was you know it was lukewarm, but the the characters' backstories I felt were really good. Really good. All right. Um. Well, Caleb, I think we've talked about the story enough. Yeah. Shall we move on to gameplay? Yeah, let's do that. All right, Joe, so how did you feel about the gameplay for Final Fantasy IX? The gameplay for Final Fantasy IX. Well, there are many aspects to gameplay, I do believe. Okay, how did you feel about the way we go about learning abilities in the game? <laughs> Through <laughs> Is items. this a pointed question, Caleb? No, like, well, I Joe forgot Joe look about like it. an idiot. Well, I don't... The fact is that I am an idiot. Okay. And so... I naturally played through two discs without having any clue whatsoever as to how I can give Garnett new abilities. You know what I'm seeing here? I'm seeing a You're trend. Seeing a yes by a certain team that has developed a certain set of games that you've had <laughs> certain difficulties with six, nine, and twelve, perhaps. Perhaps there is a connection here with the a okay, disconnect. So with six, I didn't understand the summons. The summons and how they pertain to your magic. Right. Although that was quickly um, resolved. Resolved. Yeah, you can get through that pretty fast. The late areas give you. I'm not sure if I said that on the podcast when we were talking about six, but yeah, I had some troubles with. They never tell you specifically how to use your like inventory and how to get new abilities. So I was. You were just playing the game. I was just playing the game, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. It did for the first part, but then I blew six away near the end. So. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't, really, it didn't really affect it too badly. However, Final Fantasy IX was a different story. Uh, it, you know, with 12, that, that system's hard <laughs> for however, you know, when I, when I tried it many years ago. I, was just, right. I didn't understand that you could do so many automated things. <laughs> Until, like, halfway through playing the game. Yeah. Yeah, and in this game, it was probably about the halfway point that I found out you had to give her, like, jewels to, uh... What, what were those, like, crystal things? Like, rubies and stuff like that? Yeah, to get the summons. Yeah, to get the yeah, summons. Only, uh, and other abilities, too. Because right. all I would do when I was equipping my guys would just... Optimize. Optimize. Always hit the optimize button. Sometimes. That's what I've done for forever. Yeah. And, like, some of the abilities in Final Fantasy IX that you would get by doing that, I would just... For me, it was like I was randomly getting them. But, um, you know, whenever you would get an ability, I wasn't always 100% sure of what it did. Yeah, you know? like locomotion. Uh, there's all these weird-ass names. Clear-headed. You just had to kind of assume what they did and then use them and then yeah, see. Yeah, I wish, like, when you would, like, hover over them, there'd be, like, some explanation. But yeah, there never it's kind of dickish that there's not, but I kind of understood most of them. And you were, I, I explained it to you. still don't understand what Jelly does. You're just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Your guy just is in awe of the enemy. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, so, yeah, I have no idea what Jelly does. Or, uh, uh, clear-headed. Clear-headed, uh, keeps confusion away. So you remember that boss at the wall, when the, with the wall of faces? Yes. Clear headed is yes. amazing in that fight, because you don't get confused. Okay. And when you get confused in that fight, you get fucked. Yeah. I would always go for, like, auto potion and stuff like that. Yeah. The sucky thing about auto potion is it's just potion. So, like, in the end bat battle, I'd get hit by a four, you know, like, a 1,500 damage spell, and Vivi'd be like, 150, <laughs> baby. Well, Count here's, it. here's how I survived the final battle. I had auto potion and auto regen on Zidane. Nice. So... No matter what, he was, like, doing every every couple seconds, he'd have 300 more health. I never had to heal Zidane. And the nice thing about that is is it doesn't take into account how slow the the battle system is. It just keeps giving you the health. So it's, right. it works with it right. for that ex to that extent, yeah. It was pretty sweet. There were worse things, though, and that's why yeah. I took that one off. But anyway, so you had, you had problems. <laughs> I had problems with, with the, the ability. I didn't understand what they were doing until I, like, I was so confused. I was like, why the fuck... 
is it disc three and I still have VV doesn't have an Aga spell. They're all like Thundara and all this other shit. And then mm-hmm. I asked you about it and you were like, dude, <laughs> you haven't been equipping them? I'm like, what are you talking about? And then you went into your menu and you showed me exactly what to do. And uh, I just felt like an idiot. Yeah. So I, I had played this game years ago. Didn't remember any of that part. Hmm. And yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. And I, so I had no summons on Gunrat because those those rubies or whatever, sapphires, yeah, the all gems. those little, all the gems that you get. Thank you for finding the word gem for me. I was having trouble with it. Uh, all those little gems that you, you give to her, they're never as good as mm-hmm. some other piece of equipment. No, when you optimize, as far they'll as, always as far get as stats, taken out. So, yeah. Which is why I didn't optimize. Yeah, fuck I, my life. I only learned a couple of the summons, honestly. I kind of threw a few on just to see what they looked like, and most of the summon animations were pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed them, but for the most part, I was like, nah, I'm not going to be using them. She's going to be my healer. So. The summons in this game were weak. Yeah, they didn't do Yeah, a like I got Bahamut, and I was like... Odin... Uh, he does maybe like 2,500 at the most. Yeah, and I used him for a few times. It might have to do with like Garnet's level or something like that. I never used... I used her as a white mage almost entirely. In certain boss fights, I used her to summon. Did you? Yeah, if okay. I if, if the boss wasn't doing that much damage, I just kind of ticked away a little more. <laughs> but so the... Did you like the you know the ability did i like the ability it. system once i understood it i regretted playing the entire first part of the game without using it cuz i realized that could have made the game a lot easier uh further on <laughs> yeah yeah cuz then you wouldn't have to catch up but it's it's pretty fast to catch up anyway which is why a lot of people yeah in the end area a lot of thing uh, things have a lot of ap mm-hmm. like i had no idea what the fucking ap was going towards Really? Yeah. Like, I knew I was getting abilities, but I didn't know how those abilities... I thought... I was like, are they randomly assigned? Like, I didn't understand like with it. with 4, where you get a certain level, and then you get the abilities? Yeah. I, I was thinking maybe that was happening, but then you guys were getting different stuff than me, and I was like, when is Garnett going to get a fucking summon? Because I remember her being the summon from before. I, I had apparently known this system before. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, forgot. this playthrough, I was like, Durr, as I played through <laughs> the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like it's super embarrassing to have to say this over the podcast that I did not pay any attention to what I was doing and just uh could have made the game a lot easier for myself. Yeah, it probably it probably could have, but ugh. I I kind of liked it. I I still think sixes is kind of preferred. I really liked how you equipped the summons. It made a lot more sense than equipping a certain helmet and then learning a a, a different attack. Mm-hmm. Like that doesn't really make any sense to me, but it's still cool. I still like the I think it works really well. It does, and it's cool because it makes you want to go back and use weaker items to get better abilities, mm-hmm. more useful abilities or to get them all or whatever you want. You know, got to catch them all kind of thing. <laughs> Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I like that aspect, and I, I did understand it, so I utilized it a lot. And the only time I ended up actually having to change to optimize was that boss fight. That like fucking what was it? It was like an airship, an evil airship that came down after the after the wall of faces. That really creepy part. Yeah. Uh, that guy wrecked me. He like fucking destroyed me. With the first time I fought him, I was just destroyed. Like it was the only boss up to this point that had really given me any shit, except any for problems? one of the black the black waltz in the ice cave killed me because I he did a tsunami and then he did like two. I had to moves. play against Beatrix twice at the end of the first disc. Yeah, yeah. I was able to take her, but this guy, this giant ship dude with like a fucking lance at the front of it, wrecked me. So I just went in and optimized everything, and then went in and just fucking destroyed him. Now that I'm thinking about it, I re- I think I only remember. Dying on two bosses. <laughs> yeah. Other yeah. Than Kujo, in the end, obviously wrecked us both a few times. Oh, okay. Times. Three, three then. You're right. He was rough. I only remember three. I probably had a couple more, but... Uh, nothing that you were just, like, blown away, like, what the fuck no, just happened? No, no, nothing like that. This game was overall... The difficulty level was pretty consistent. And although it was sometimes challenging, it was never impossible. Right. Even at the end, it wasn't anything like what I experienced with 4 when I got to the end of 4. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I get in, get into the fight and I just instantly get wiped out. Like, just fucking destroyed. It was not like that. It was close with the very last guy, Necron. But it wasn't nearly as brutal. I agree. One of the things that did make it more of a difficult 
game in in one aspect, and this one aspect almost alone is that there's this game. There's a complete lack of saves. Yeah, that's true. Because you got there's the mogs, but. I, I think the game designers thought, well, where would a mog actually be? And anywhere where a mog shouldn't be, they don't put a save, <laughs> yeah. which is exactly where you want to save. Because, you know, in a place where mogs don't want to be, like the Ifa tree <laughs> is an evil place. <laughs> right. They, they wouldn't have a mog there, but I still need a fucking save so I don't have to go through an hour and a half of cutscenes. Yeah. In order to fight the Ifa tree again, which luckily I only ever had to fight the Ifa tree once, but I was so afraid because I knew. <laughs> It was gonna be the last boss of the disc, and I was like, "Please no, <laughs> I don't want to go back and do this again." Yeah, I hear you on that. And this this game was brutal in that aspect. In that aspect, but in other aspects, it was, I think, along with seven and, and six, I'd say it's an easy Final Fantasy. Yeah, six's final area was more difficult than nine's, though, by far. Six is the random enemies in six. The lead up and the fact that you had to use your gimp party. Well, was that that was it was harder for you. Yeah, it was still more difficult than it would have been if you wouldn't have had to. Have True, been, by far. I, I didn't. I still thought that six was just. I it had trouble. Easy. I had trouble with Ultros on the river, and that was about it. In six. Yeah, I had trouble with Ultros like twice. Yeah. And with seven this time around, it was just. Just just got through everything yeah. super easy. The only time with seven, you know, this is kind I of think the only time you're ever going to have a problem with Final Fantasy is if you've never played it before. Or if you're super, super under leveled. Yeah. That'll be an issue too. Sorry, something weird happened in the background and I got distracted. What was weird? It was like something moved over there and there's nothing over there. Oh, oh what? God. It's like I live right next to a parking lot. No, it's like around. something with the blinds. Something like fell out and like moved what yeah i think it was that little rod thing i don't know it sounded like that anyway anyways whatever got a poltergeist in my apartment yeah we should try to talk to it with the recording equipment (laughs) yeah exactly oh did you hear that white noise yeah it was a ghost we can get Kiefer sutherland to be in it actually i don't know if he was in that movie that wasn't Kiefer sutherland that was a ah shit beetlejuice what's his name i can't remember you know who i'm talking about though no, you don't. I don't know his name, though. Fuck, he's Birdman. Oh, uh... What? <sighs> Batman. Michael Keaton? Yeah, Michael Keaton. Is that him? Yeah. Him? Michael Keaton's the lead in White Noise. Oh, that movie sucks, but anyway. That movie does suck. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in theaters, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Jeez. It had, like, three good jumps in it. Yeah, there were some frightening parts. It's yeah. like cheap thrills. But anyway, the yeah, I, I saw White Noise too, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah, my parents we we've tried my family has tried to watch a scary movie every Halloween and as we've got as they've gotten more grandkids, it's just been impossible, but um earlier on we my parents, my mom went and picked up White Noise too. And I was like <laughs> It was really dumb. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree with you on this. The the movie sucked. No, but I mean the game. Uh, the, <laughs> the the gameplay was it was a pretty easy one. Um, there was only a few parts where I was like, Jesus, kind of a pain in the ass. And it was more. I think someone said on the forums that it was like the most level as far as like your levels are always right where they should be. It's a balanced game. If you're not fighting, if you're not running away from everything, mm-hmm. everything's about just about where it needs to be. That's probably that's a good design. I mean, honestly, that's how the game yeah. should be. Right? Really, really well designed gameplay. Mm-hmm. Really even the abilities only make it easier. I, I certainly wasn't. It wasn't an impossible game without getting all the abilities. Yeah. I mean, I would just level up more. <laughs> Yeah, and that you can always uh, grind your way out of a corner in right. Final Fantasy for the most part. So, I'm overall pretty pretty satisfied with the gameplay. Um, you're back, of course, to four characters in the party. Yeah. I think it's more of a like, you know, um, a callback. A callback to the I think six and down. You had four members. Yeah, for most of them, and it was I loved that. I really oh, I said, liked. Having. I think four. You had five actually. You had five members in the party in four. I don't... Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. That's a ton. Yeah. I'm getting used to three again. <laughs> Three's not enough, man. <laughs> There's too many good characters to only have three. Anyway, um, so that, that callback was cool, but there there was the one thing that was like the paddle system, 
Mm -hmm. even at max speed is super slow. Yeah, when I first jumped into the game and got into the first few fights, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> because I just gotten through 8, right? And what's, eight, 8 is lightning fast. <laughs> yeah, once once I got to Ultimacia Squall, I was able to do two limit breaks in the time that everyone's loading bar got up to 1. Mm -hmm. And it was disgusting, and I was able to do, you know, 40,000 damage just instantly. And then, then I get into this fight against the boss of Tantalus, and it's just Everyone's just standing around waiting, standing around waiting. <laughs> then I could go, and then to stand around waiting. I'm like, holy shit, this is insanely slow. I didn't know if I could get past it. I was like, this is really bad. And then I eventually got past it. I think it, you get used to it. Is that what happened? Because it yeah. feels like my character's speed got better. That their speed stat probably got better, so you'd have more turns. So it did That's get faster. That's kind of how it works. So it got. It got faster, but it didn't... It's not really noticeably it's faster. It's still slow, yeah. It's still really slow battle system. The slowest in the series, yeah. mind you. And uh, here's... I do have a problem with it, but I think most of that stems from the fact that I had just played Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. And eights is really fast. Sevens is a little slower than eights, but it's still pretty fast. And sixes, they're all fast. <laughs> Yeah. Until 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 nine. <laughs> yeah, nine's really slow, and it's tens like, can be as slow let's as take you our want. Time. <laughs> tens can take longer if you wanted to. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, because tens is is turn based, but the animations are really quick. True. So you can make the fights super fast. I mean, right. But uh, yeah, that wasn't the only problem that I had, though. One of the others, the other issue that I had with the game, and this one was. It kind of stemmed out of the same thing, was the, the trance. I hated when I would waste it on just a standard boss, or not even a boss, just a random fight. I'd be sitting there, I'd be, you know, approaching a boss fight, and I'd jump in, they would hit me, I would go into trance, end the battle with the random enemy, and then fight the boss with a completely depleted limit break bar. Yeah, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> limit break. You know, we had a question about limit breaks before, and I remember us going like, or at least me going like, eh, "I can't really remember it." Yeah, <laughs> and then it was like, "Oh, it's a lot like if every character was named Vincent." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where it's, they're really cool until they're not. They're really great until you're like, uh, you're, "You're healing them, dude. Stop." <laughs> yeah, it's it's a similar system to seven where you take damage and it goes up, but it's a lot slower. It is, and it's kind of cool. So you can't really time it that easily, right? You have to go into like ten battles, and then. Yeah. One thing that I did like though is that it was based on their emotions, also. So like a strong feeling towards the battle like if it's a you know between Kuja and Zidane Zidane's would go faster in those fights right because he's like fueled to fight this guy yeah and there's a couple parts where they're like instantly in it yeah I can't really v. think of any on top, on top of my head but I know it happens there's a VV battle with the I think it's when the right after all the dudes get killed on the ship the really powerful scene he's insta tranced because he's super that's pissed right. at the, that's right yeah that's one of them and that part I really like that's cool because that would make you go berserk you know seeing mm -hmm. all these people that you thought were one of you get destroyed mm -hmm. but I still didn't like the trance the way you get the trance but the abilities and the way they looked afterwards was awesome and it was really cool yeah I liked the uh, double black magic on yeah. TV every when time you could do friggin meteor twice yeah I wish it had double white for Garnet, Garnet. I know doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that would be really good, and especially against Kuja. Oh, mm -hmm. God. But uh, and, uh, funny en funnily enough, right before I fought the Kuja fight, I three of my characters' trance bars were, like, max. Really? So when I got into the fight, I had trances, so I destroyed him. Except for when he killed Garnett. Because the problem I ran into is I would be curing. You know, I'd have her set up for Kiraga mm -hmm. for the whole team, and he would do... He would spam his... Uh, I'm glad you had the ability to put Kiraga on the whole team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that must be nice for you. It is. Did you not have Kiraga? Not for the whole team. Oh, you can do the button. I was healing one one by one. You can use... You can press L1. Oh, my God. You can, you can target the whole team. Fuck! Yeah. It doesn't do God. as much. It does, like, 2,000-something to everybody instead of, like, six. That'd still be super useful. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. Because <laughs> uh, that final fight, uh, I'm sure we'll talk about this more, that final fight was just uh, me. It was rough. Everybody but Zidane dying. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then Garnett, I would use, I would heal her first, and then she'd be healing everyone. Right, but, uh, uh what was I saying? Limit breaks. Limit breaks. Trance. Trance. <laughs> yeah, it was, the, it was cool, though, the, the abilities that I did have, like the Solution 9 or whatever Zidane has, it does max damage mm-hmm. every time, basically. So I really liked them, but I hated the way they, they showed up. And I didn't, it was so inconsistent, and it was frustrating when I would blow it on a main, a regular battle, and then go into a boss fight that was difficult. Or not necessarily that it was so brutal that I needed the trance, but the fact that I wasted the fucking thing on this puny you know, uh, frog yeah, on creature. Some random, like, on some random creature. Yeah, yeah, that is super annoying. But think about all the leveling up you would do if you were trying to get tranced. True, for every boss fight. Yeah, for every boss fight. Yeah. So maybe it's not a bad strategy. Well, it would be tough, though, because one extra Because then, hit. like, what's the point of the trance if you're, like, way stronger than the boss also? Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> The problem with that, though, is every random hit, you can it's random who they're going to target, so they might put you in a trance anyway, and you have to restart if you really wanted it. That's true. But if it's a boss fight like Kuja slash uh, Necron, very long boss fight, I mm-hmm. think Zidane's bar was down, and he was in trance right at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, uh, I finished the was game. was useful for that one. I finished the game with Steiner in trance. He had one health. And I killed Necron. One health? Yeah. He did the blue light move and brought me down to one health. And oh I was like, God. I'm attacking. <laughs> <laughs> and I attacked him twice with one health and killed him. It was disgusting. I was so nervous. I was like, I am going to be pissed if he does like a spell or hits me or anything. <laughs> but I made it. it. It was brutal. Necron was sick. I was having trouble with Kuja. Kuja was really rough, too, because of the spamming. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was saying. Uh, he would two-shot... He would do that uh, AOE spell, and mm-hmm. it would he would do it twice in a row sometimes, and it would kill Garnett, and Garnett would be you know ready to cast Kiraga, and everybody else is going to do their attacks. So then after they attack, Kuja goes again two more times, and that's why I was having trouble with Kuja, is because he would two shot Garnett before she could cure everybody. In both Kuja and the final boss afterwards, Zidane was my only living party member. Really? Yeah. It was, they were both sick. Yeah. And so we both, how many times did you have to fight Kuja in the last boss? Um, I fought the last boss twice. Okay. Second how many time times did you fight Kuja? I fought Kuja, let's see, probably about four times. Okay, so even with your abilities, I still did a little better than you on that. Because I fought them both twice. Yeah. Yeah. So I beat Kuja both times, and I was on to Necron, and lost once, and then won the second time. Mm. Uh, I had to go and level up. That's what I had to do. Between, after you lost Kuja. After I lost to Kuja, I saw how much damage he was doing, and then Necron was sick. Yeah. I, I went and leveled up. But the second time I played, I realized I wasn't playing very defensively. Here's the thing with Final Fantasy IX, is because of the kind of a low difficulty level of everything else, and then a high difficulty level of the last boss, and I guess there's an optional boss somewhere in the game that's supposed to be sick, um... The problem with that is that you're not learning to play defensively like you are in the other Final Fantasies mm-hmm. where you're like giving yourselves protect and shell and, shell and mm-hmm. all this other shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have other spells that can help me on this. And if you cast Reflect, uh, those like Thundar- Thundaga spells that he uses don't hit. They hit him instead. Yeah, he used flare on himself two or three times. Yeah, so I I realized that was like the second time around. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play this pro. I'm not gonna fuck around with just like healing and attacking. I'm going yeah. to, you know, try to give myself a good defense. And I haven't had to do this since like Final Fantasy VI. Right. I haven't really had to work on my character's Your strategy. Buffs, yeah. Right. Which is unfortunate for my play experience of Final Fantasy IX was... Yeah, I think that's why I lost the first two times to Kuja also. You just didn't buff yourself enough. No, and then the next time I'm like, hey, he keeps hitting Vivi with Flare, so I'm gonna do Reflect. Mm -hmm. And then he hit Vivi with Flare, and it bounced off and fucked him. Yeah. And then I would hit Vivi with Thundaga, and it would bounce off Vivi and hit him, and I'm like, okay, this guy's dead. Yeah, so that's what happened with with me. It was like, I had to change my mindset, and and I also (laughs) leveled up for an hour. I, I went... Back to town, got some tents, went back in, leveled up for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. One nice. of the guys at work was telling me you can use a tent in battle in that game. 
I never did that. I never did that either. I wonder if that's true. Yeah, I'm going to have to check it, because that sounds awesome if it is. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. So there's a lot of things we obviously didn't exploit in Final Fantasy IX that could have yeah. been exploitable. And certainly, if we were to go back and do side quests, which we didn't do any in Final Fantasy IX, yeah. we'd go back and do that now. Um, real quick, before we talk about side quests, which we, have, which we skipped, <laughs> um, and we'll talk about why. Uh, what was your final party for your for the final boss for Necron slash Kuja? Uh, my final party for the last portion of the game, in fact, was Zidane, Garnett, Vivi, and Steiner. Okay. The reason I had Vivi and Steiner was because of their magic combo, which I didn't realize fell off near the end of disc three, and then I just basic attacked with Steiner one time, mm-hmm. and I was like, uh, how did that do more than Thundaga Sword? <laughs> And I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just use regular attacks. There was a point when they were doing about the same, mm-hmm. I noticed. And I was like, well, fuck the magic then. There's no point. Well, you can also put uh, the AP attack on Steiner, which makes him even more powerful. Yeah, I guess. So that's what I did. But yeah, that was my final party. What about you? My final party was Steiner, Zidane, Garnett, and Freya. Really? No Vivi? Yeah. The I tried Vivi the first time around. The second time around, I did Freya. Did you have Meteor? I did have Meteor. Okay. But uh, it still only did like 3,000, and Freya would do 3,000 on her, uh, dra- like her Dragoon, like her Spear. Yeah. Meteor. So it'd be about the same. I'm now, admittedly, my Vivi was kind of underleveled, and so was Freya, but I leveled up Freya for an hour because I knew I was like, I need more damage on this final boss. I need to take him on, and Vivi's not doing enough damage. And it's my fault that Vivi wasn't doing enough damage. It was because of the abilities thing, as I was talking about. He was just behind yeah. on everything. Yeah, my comment was doing about 6k. Really? My meteor, yeah. I never. I don't think I ever tried it on the final boss. It misses sometimes, so okay. it's kind of a pain in the There was other bosses on the way there that I tried meteor on and only did like 3,000. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, fuck meteor. It's way too much uh, MP. Magic, yeah. Yeah, so maybe I should have tried it again, but I didn't. That's yeah, um, fine. Yeah, uh, I started doing Freya because I knew she would jump out of battle and not always get hit by the things Necron was doing. Yeah, that's a good tactic. And that did save me like twice during that very, very long battle. The animations are super long. The battle speed is slow. Yeah, everything. it's scary too and when it, you cast yeah, that when, Grand Cross move. Well, when you're 45 minutes into that battle, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super scary when like only Zidane is alive. Yeah. And there were three times during that battle when only Zidane was alive. He kept putting buffs on himself and I didn't have dis- dispel. So Zidane was only doing like 2,000 damage each time and he's got yeah. 55,000 health. Um, so I, yeah, I just had to keep keep hitting him with what I had and... Uh, yeah, I had to keep throwing elixirs on myself. I had yeah. Zidane and... Uh, Zidane and... Oh, God. I forgot his name for a second. Steiner. Steiner. I had both of them alive for a certain portion, and I had Zidane buffing Steiner with elixirs because he kept doing the blue light mm-hmm. one health move, and then Zidane died, and just Steiner went trance, and I was like, hey, fuck it. I have to kill this guy. I can't. <laughs> I, I have to kill him or he's going to kill me, so I just went for it. Okay. But it was brutal. And yeah, when he cast Protect on himself, I didn't have any D spell either. Okay. So, so you were so, doing chopped damage? Yeah. It yeah. got up to around 6K with Steiner... Uh, buffed and then when he when the protect ran off obviously it was max damage and trance but so we both agree that the final boss was much harder than anything else in the game yes yes yeah which is is the way it kind of should be but yeah. there was not really any build up no it was just like boom yeah it was it was a similar problem that final fantasy 5 have and i say problem in quotes because he was beatable yeah. Final Fantasy Fives, though, I don't know what I would do without Giltas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure X Death could rule the universe at this point. There is no final boss <laughs> more brutal than X Death. Yeah, but uh, as far as final areas, I think Threes really has it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That super long dungeon and seven bosses in a row. True. Yeah. I only lost to one of the bosses, though. Well, I know you did, but you also had your restart bullshit. You true. never had to walk through that thing again. That's true. I didn't experience that, so yeah, it doesn't so make it fuck you. quite fair. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, though, I thought the gameplay was very well balanced and fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I didn't feel like I needed to flee from any battles, except for when I got super annoying enemies over and over again. In the very last area with the... With the big, huge creatures. They were kind of OP, not worth the experience. They yeah, really weren't. They were disgusting. 
I went back a little further into Memoria instead of in the crystal yeah. area. I leveled up in Memoria, not in the crystal. Yeah. <laughs> so it's what, like trying what to level, level were your guys on? Um, I was like early 50s. Okay. I had Zidane on level 56, and I think Freya, who was the lowest, I think she was on 49. Mm. So we're, you're a little higher level, I yeah. think. I was a little higher level, but we had the same time. Of course, yeah. you, you were exploring a lot more. Now, let's talk about side quests here when, as far as gameplay goes. Um, why we didn't do side quests. Now, Final Fantasy IX was, to me, an extremely linear Final Fantasy. Um, it had, You were moving around place to place a lot, but there wasn't really anything in between, and there wasn't any way until you got an airship, which is like at the end of the game, um, to explore. There, there mm. wasn't really anywhere that you could go. Yeah, it gave you the illusion of non-linear, but then you found out right. that that's the only place you can go is to the next area. So it was it was pretty linear while also keeping the illusion of free roam. Right, and I don't have a problem with linear. No, but it's fine. When one of the, when the Final Fantasies are linear like that, like thirteen, um, and with nine now, <laughs> now that I see it <laughs> as I yeah. was playing it, and I was like, this, this, they're dragging me along. Uh, there, there's not really any side quests side quest kind of opportunities until the very end of the game. Now, there are the Stelazio coins. Am I pronouncing that right? I don't know. Uh, I found like, a ton of those. Yeah, though. there are Ares and all these other things that you could find through treasure hunting, and there were tons of treasures in the game. Yeah, everywhere. And so that was that was one side quest was the 13 did you find the... Uh, I'm going to call them Stelazios, and I have a feeling that's the wrong word. Uh, the 13... Um, Coins. The thirteen coins that you got to find. Right. One of which you you can't you can only find in one part of the game, which is really annoying. Yeah. Um. So there was a point at the end where I was like, okay, I might take a day to do side quests, and then I looked online to see what the side quests were, because no no side quest in this game except for the Stelazio coin hunt really was like, hey, this is a side quest. You and the magnet. And the magnet. But there wasn't really much from the Magnet that I did, because I think I missed a few, and that really puts you behind on the yeah. Magnet, like a shitload. There were like three random letters I, I collected, and I never gave them to the right things, because I didn't do it right, right from the beginning. So, there's the Magnet quest, and I'm not sure what you get at the end of the Magnet quest. Yeah. Um, and there's the Stelazio coin quest. I can't remember what you get at the end of that, either. I think it's someone's ultimate weapon. Um, but I'm not sure. I'll be honest. Uh, I didn't look that up. But uh, then there's the, so there's only like three quests. The third quest is this giant chocobo. It's a giant side quest, is what it is. Mm-hmm. And at the very end, you get Zidane's ultimate weapon. Um, but it requires a lot of hours to do just one long side quest. So it's interesting to me when I was looking up the side quests. Um, just how few there were in Final Fantasy IX. Like, I guess the Chocobo treasure hunt thing was... Because you get different items at different times, it could be multiple side quests in that way, but it's really just one long one because you have to go from one to the next to the next to get different items. Right. So I felt like that was going to just be a huge time waster, and I guess I I was in a hurry to beat the game, so I, I just didn't do it. Well, yeah, we were kind of... We did give ourselves a deadline, but I, I didn't really feel motivated to do the ones in this game. To do the side quests. Which is weird, because in 8 I did. In 8, when I got the airship, Ragnarok, and it was on disc 3, disc 4, I went and sought out in different areas. Yeah. In 7, we with do eight everything. With 8 and 7, you know, you go to a certain area, and there's going to be a side quest in that area. You know, there's there seems to be a lot of them. Final mm-hmm. Fantasy Nine, there's... You know, two giant ones, one little one, a couple other little ones, too, for so certain did, treasure. And it's just like, yeah, how I don't know why the the extra content in this game is just so low. There's also a there's an extra boss in, in one place, too. Right. That you can go and enter and try to beat. That's it. You don't have to do anything special to get to him either. Yeah. It's as the, far as I could tell. It's, as far in as the, what I read. it's in the same place as the Stelazio, I believe. He's like trapped down below. Okay. I tried him and he destroyed me. But Oh, you tried him? Yeah. Nice. He was sick. At the time, at least. <laughs> Try and then there's the, there's the optional guy in the hunt, too. And he's like one of the few ways you actually win the hunt. That big beast that they were unleashing that like broke out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you find him, he gives you a ton of points if you kill him. Oh, huh. well... 
Didn't matter though. Well, I, I was looking at like a list of side quests. I saw that, but like, uh, yeah, with Final Fantasy VIII, you can get you know other GFs and Final Fantasy VII. You know, get Leviathan, get extra characters, and yeah. find out more on character backstories by going going to certain spots. As far as I could tell and find, there just wasn't much in Final Fantasy IX. So even though I'm not that much of a side quester, which is another reason why I didn't go back and do it but i have been i mean except with final fantasy 8 i have been trying to do a good amount of side quests um i just felt i don't know i'm kind of disappointed in the amount of side quests there are in final fantasy 9 yeah considering it's hiroyuki ito and of course he went on to make a make 12 yeah and that's just just <laughs> side quest city yeah it's it's they built that city on on side quests really. yeah uh, th- th- that I'm slightly disappointed in, but otherwise, you know, gameplay-wise, uh, I had fun. It was yeah, good, it was good, solid gameplay. And I think a solid, although kind of forgettable story also. Right. Right. So, Caleb, is there anything about the gameplay else that you feel like you haven't mentioned? Um... No, I don't think so. I think we... Not really? Covered everything that I can I, think of. I thought what was interesting that they didn't do in 7 they didn't do in 8 was that they kind of brought back the party system or the job system I should say not yeah. the party system yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, so like you know Freya's a dragoon and Zidane's a thief which yeah. by the way to get some of the best weapons and equipment in the game you gotta steal from every boss without buying it you, can you gotta still steal get three times because every boss has three items to yeah. steal <laughs> it's it's not really the only way to get them but it's just the mm, early way to there get are them. some that you, you and because steal. of that I had tons of gill to get stuff that I didn't get to steal. So it's right. very valuable. And that was a cool gameplay aspect that yeah. was very original. The, the, the lead game. being a thief is really unusual. Yeah. It's usually and, like a warrior. And you utilize his thieving ways quite right. a bit. And it's, it's actually brings a cool, you know, separation of, mm. yeah, it stands alone in that category where it's a very, you know, unique. And then Garnet and, Eco are white mages with Garnet being a summoner also. Uh, oh, they're both summoners. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Why was I separating them? Um, VV, of course, is a black mage, and he's modeled on the classic uh, black mage from Final Fantasy 1, which is really yeah. interesting. I do believe that Steiner is probably a warrior. Yeah, he's the warrior class. And I'm wondering what Amaranth is. Amaranth's a thief, too, I think. Amaranth's a thief? Mm-hmm. He's very similar to Zidane. Okay, okay. and then uh, Quinnaquen is a blue mage. Yeah, of course. Uh, I I hardly ever used blue mages through any of these Final Fantasies. Yeah, I used Quistus. So I, I never really used him, but Quistus has some good limit breaks. That's true. She was my. But you got limit breaks parties. from drops of items, and not from eating creatures after ten percent health. True. Which was. I, I only got like three or four of his abilities because I was like, I'm not doing this the whole game. I'm not going <laughs> to eat everything that I come across, so sorry. I thought it was kind of fun. Not going to use Quinnaquin. Discovering it. Like, I mean, in 7, you discover them by having your uh, you know enemy skill equipped, and they do the spell to you, and your guy spins around, and you get it. I think it's kind of cool to find out the right, ways well, to get stuff. To each his own, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the usefulness of a blue mage. Yeah. Not necessarily the most useful. He wasn't in my final party by any means, but <laughs> I would have probably had Freya in there for him. All right. So we've, stu- we've, we've covered the making of the game, the story, and the gameplay. And uh, now we're going to move on to graphics slash design. Hey guys, thanks for listening to part one of Final Fantasy IX's review from Ultima Final Fantasy. The Ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope you guys join us next week for part two. Um, so stay tuned. <laughs>